Okay, everybody. Can y'all hear me? I hope y'all can hear me. Welcome to Kiki Last Night Nigeria. Hey, everybody. I'm going to wait a couple seconds so everybody get on here because I think I jump on here a little earlier than y'all do. Okay. So look, I just want to make sure everybody can hear me before we get started because we're going to talk about some really important stuff tonight. And I just want to make sure that you guys hear this because some of the stuff that I found out when I was in, you know, researching this case was really interesting. And it was things that I had no clue about. You know, I had no clue that your foreign spouse was entitled to all of this if you pass away. And we need to know about that. We need to know about that. Because after, at some point, we become worth more to them dead <laughs> than we do alive. Because you know what? <clears throat> it's easier to get the papers. Well, I'm going to tell you about that later. So make sure y'all can hear me so we can, uh, we're going to get started. All right. So everybody, welcome to my show. My name is Kiki and welcome to Kiki Loves Nigeria. On this episode of Kiki Loves Nigeria, we're going to talk about something. We're going to continue to talk about something that we've been talking about for about two weeks now. And that was a suspicious death of Audrey. Audrey LaShawn Davis, better known as Soul, her sister. Now, Audrey was from, um, I believe she was from Cleveland or Georgia. No, I'm sorry. That was the other lady. Danita was from Cleveland. I believe Audrey was from South Carolina. She was from the South, okay? She was from the South and she relocated to the Gambia, all right? So we're gonna talk about her and we're gonna talk about the tragedy that happened to Miss Audrey when she went to the Gambia, okay? We're gonna talk about what happened to her, what, you know, when she went there and try to figure out what happened to her when she got there. So let me introduce myself for people who don't know me. Make sure you tell me if you can't hear me. My name is Kiki. We're going to run through this real quick because mostly everybody know me. I look at my stats and I don't really have new people. I have returning people. So mostly y'all know who I am. My name is Kiki. Kiki loves Nigeria. I'm from the great state of Ohio. And uh, what we're talking about, we're talking about what happens when your repat journey turns into a nightmare because we're under this, this belief, this premise that this repat journey is just so wonderful and that it's so easy and that, you know, nothing is going to happen to us. And Africa is the safest place in the world. And it turns out to be that that is not the truth, people. That is far from the truth. It turns out that these repats are really just lying to us. The ones that are in Africa on the ground, most of them, not all of them, but most of them that we see on YouTube are lying to us about their situation in Africa. And I'm not even talking about just West Africa because I watch the ones in East Africa and they're going through the same thing. All the African the African Americans who were running to Rwanda because Rwanda was so much better. East Africa was so much better than West Africa. Well, guess what? Now they're leaving Rwanda. So why is that people? Why is that? If one is so much better than the other, why are they doing the same? Why are African Americans in East Africa doing the same thing as West Africa leaving? Because it's Africa. <laughs> Key word, Africa, people. And you got to be ready for that life. And most of the people who I see on YouTube who talk about their repatriation journey, they are not ready. Most of them, don't, they don't even understand African culture. They, when I say African culture, I mean the different cultures because I know there's no such thing as an African culture, but some people believe it is because Africa is a continent, people, with many different countries there. And within those countries, there's many different cities. And within those cities, there's many different villages with many different groups who live there with many different customs and cultures. And you got to know that. You got to understand that. But we don't know that. We don't understand that. And most of the time I found, we don't even care about that. We think because it's Africa, it's like somehow we don't need to know. We don't need to understand it. You know, it's just Africa. We can just do it because it's just Africa. 
for the old now. <laughs> mm. I keep telling y'all, Africa is the land of the black man. It's where we come from. You see how complex we are? Don't you think our homeland and the people who stay behind, don't you think they're just equally as complex or even more complex? You don't think that? You think those people are what? Less than? Because I don't know how you could go over there and don't even visit, but you're going to buy land. You don't even understand the custom, the land customs. But the first thing you do when you get there is you want to buy land. That tells me you know nothing about Africa. Nothing. Especially West Africa, you know nothing. Nothing. And you see, that's all they're talking about is buying land and building them a house. That's all they're talking about. That's all they're talking about. That's their main goal. That's how you know they know nothing about the place where they are and the people that they're dealing with. All right. So why are we talking? Why am I talking about this? Because it's just alarming because we're, we're putting ourselves in danger. We don't realize that in these countries, they practice witchcraft. A lot of these countries practice witchcraft, just like in America. African-Americans practice witchcraft. It's a part of our culture, people. But if you don't study our culture, you're not going to know that. And you're going to be so offended when I say that. But it is. It's a part of our culture. In African-American culture, it's called hoodoo. Okay? Everybody has their own form of witchcraft because witchcraft is tied to your culture, it's tied to your ancestors, and it's tied to your gods. All right? And that's different in each family. In each family, it's different. And if you don't understand that, and you're going around in Africa talking about you're going to buy some land, you're going to buy some land, do you know ancestors are tied to land? Do you know gods are tied to land? G-O-D-S, small G-O-D-S, are tied to land in Africa, just like here, the Indian burial grounds. You don't think that that goes on in Africa? No, because it's Africa. It's Black people. Yeah, and these Black people can't, can't possibly be as smart as we are. Can't possibly. Now, how did I get my information? That's why I'm talking about this. That's why I'm talking about this, because that type of thinking, and I'm not saying this is what Audrey was thinking. I'm not saying this is what she's thinking. But this is what I've seen from African American who's going over there. That they don't know who these people are that they're dealing with. These people are very dangerous people, just like we are. If you don't understand our culture, and you come jump in the hood, and you jump in the mix, and you don't know what you're doing, y'all know what's going to happen to you. And you got money, you got money, and you're a single woman, and you're by yourself. Come on, y'all. You know what's going to happen to you. So don't act like, oh, this is something new. This is not, oh, I'm so surprised. If it was here, you wouldn't be surprised. So why are you surprised in Africa? Oh, because it's Africa. It's Africa. Oh, they're so docile, especially the Gambia. They're so nice. They just smile all the time. My grandmother always told me. Beware of those people who smile all the time. Those are the people who stick a knife in your back. And every, every time when I learned about the smiling coast in the Gambia, I always thought, wow, that's the place you got to really watch your back. Because everybody's not smiling in your face is going to be your friend. They're not. They're not. And I was looking back at reviews from the Gambia from 10 years ago. And do you know this same thing I complain about? They were complaining about 10 years ago, these prices, how we get charged so much and how expensive it is. But nobody tells you that. Nobody tells you that. Gabby is very expensive. That place is very expensive. So if you think you can go there with a couple of thousand dollars and make it, that's the biggest lie told to man. And that's why they're smiling because they're saying, look at this, another fool coming over here with a little bit of money, believing what Black Acres is telling them. 
and these other people on YouTube telling them to run out their countries with no money, but run to Africa where you have no social system, you have no support, you barely have an infrastructure. And I'm not talking about Africa because I'm getting ready to go back to Africa. I go to Africa every year. I love Africa, but I see Africa for what it is. I see, I tell the truth, okay? And for me to love you, I have to see you for who you are. And I see Africa for who she is. And she's developing. She's develop She's a work in progress. Gambia is a beautiful country. It's a work in progress. But it's a tourist country. It's like Las Vegas. You know how expensive Las Vegas is. You know how expensive Orlando, Florida is. You know how expensive Florida is because it's a tourist de destination. So quit acting like Gambia is not a tourist destination and that it's not expensive because it is. It is. It is because that's how they make their money is from tourism. So that's the first thing you got to understand. So when you go in there and you telling me you about to buy land in a country where they base their economy on tourism, OK, on tourism and you got like Black Acres, 26 acres of land. Soon as this country need some more land, because Gambia is a small country, who do you think they're going for? Who do you think they're going for? And they can do that. They can do that because the public use overrides the private use, the private use. And that's what you need to understand. But you don't understand that because you're gonna go buy land. You're not even buying land because you can't buy land in Africa. You can only lease it. So that's why I'm talking about this because I'm tired of people going astray. I'm tired of people deliberately being fed misinformation, dear life. I'm tired of the misinformation that's done deliberately to deceive us, to get us to Africa for some reason. I guess to see us suffer. I guess they just want to see us suffer because they're suffering and they're having a hard time. So they want to get you over there to see you suffer too. So I'm trying to stop that from happening. I'm trying to stop that from happening. So that's why I'm doing this show. And how did I get from my information from this show? I got it from comments. I talked to people. I did. Uh, phone interviews and I watched videos. I watched a number of videos over and over and over again. And um, I read the comments within those videos. And then I looked up some po public policy um, to find out the laws and the policies on what we're talking about in reference to what we're talking about tonight. So again, our topic is now that I presented you the evidence, what do you think happened to Audrey, better known as Soul, her sister? Now, this is something else I found shocking. All these people knew about this lady missing. But there was no video. Nobody made a video on you. Put it on YouTube. I, I, that's mind-blowing to me. I mean, like, if I knew this woman and she died, and I knew she died, she was my friend, or like these people on YouTube now are saying, oh, she was this nice, and I knew her this, and I knew... Why didn't all these YouTube content connect creators who now saying they know they knew her, why didn't they make some kind of video or reach out or do something? Do something. Sound the alarm. I didn't see any videos about her death. Nothing. You see what I mean, people? So how close are these people in the Gambia for real? How close are these people in the Gambia for real? They want y'all to think it's this lovely world. They're just this team. There's a team, really, and somebody is missing. Somebody dies unexpectedly, and y'all don't even, all y'all over there and don't, none of y'all make one video? Not one video? Not even a half a video? That's how much they, that's how much they a team over there. I told y'all. They don't like each other. I told y'all that. Y'all thought I was playing. No, they, they, they can't stand each other. They can't stand each other, y'all. They're so jealous of each other. It will make, make you sick. You can feel it in the air. Hey, everybody. So we're going to go through the comments real quick. Uh, yeah, Albany, oh, Albany, Georgia. Wow. that's I have family members from Albany, Georgia. Wow. Yeah, that's why they don't like me. 
because they know I'm going to tell them. I'm going to tell them because somebody needs to tell them. Somebody needs to tell them to quit playing. Quit playing because I go to Africa. I go and I come back and I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth. I love Africa for real with all of my heart. I study Africa. I have degrees on Africa. But I'm not going to set my people up for failure. And if you don't know Africa and you jump it in Africa, and if you don't know African culture and you're messing with African men, girl, and men, they're going to do it to you too. You got to know who you're dealing with. Just like if you're dealing with us, you got to know who you're dealing with. And y'all know that's the truth. Y'all know that's the truth. Y'all may not want to admit that's the truth, but you know it's the truth. You know it's the truth. People smile in your face. And if they think you got more than them, are you doing a little better than them? They secretly start hating on you. That's why I don't have friends. That's why I don't tell people I do YouTube. That's why I keep that quiet on the hush. Nobody at my employer knew I did YouTube until Shantae White traveled with Tay Tay. Had to tell them. Had to call my employer and tell them that I do YouTube. Because I don't do that. I don't have people in my business like that. Because I know I learned early in life Everybody that's smiling your face, they are not your friend. They are not your friend. But what we can't understand and what we have a hard time grasping as women is that men who smile in our face and tell us they love us and lay down with us will stick a knife in our back. Yeah, that's the game they play. And that's the game you're not ready for. That's the game you're not ready for, the romance scam. That's a real scam, people. That's a real scam, ladies. It's a real scam. It's a real scam. Just like the 419 scam, just like all the other scams, this romance scam is a real scam. It is the real deal scam. The real deal scam. You just think all of a sudden 26-year-olds are interested in 56-year-olds? You just think that? All of a sudden that happens. And I'm not talking about Audrey's husband because I don't think he was that young. But some of them are travel with Tay Tay. You think that man was truly interested in her? No. Monty, the one she's got on charges now, the one she was paying, that man was 26 years old. She was almost 50. You seriously think he's, he was interested in a serious relationship with her? Do you really? Or do you think he was interested in the money? And we will know this thing because ain't no way you're going to tell me that you think you can, your 26-year-old wants to be with you other than what he can get from you. And if you don't know that at that age, then something's wrong with you. Okay? That's why you need to study the place you go before you go. And then you want to say, oh, they took advantage of me. No, you took advantage of yourself. You took advantage of yourself. You put yourself in that situation. Time and time again, we put ourselves in this situation because we underestimate the African every time. Because what do we say? Oh, it's just an African. He's just an African. They're just Africans. <laughs> they Africans. The African is smarter than you think. The African will outthink you. While you're still on one, the African will be on 22. Okay, okay, and still will make you think he don't understand nothing you saying, and he understand everything you saying and more. But you think because he can't speak English, North American English, he done, she done. I could run a wool, I could play the game on her. When all along, who the game getting played on? Us. Who for who winding up dead in West Africa? Us. These women. The most educated group in America. Audrey had a master's in public administration. Did you know that? We had the same master's. Except I have another one in education. And that's just for travel with Tay Tay. So she'll know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she was an educated woman. She was not some woman who was not uneducated. 
So see, this loneliness that's plaguing America, because it is, and I told y'all about this loneliness drug a long time ago, that when you get on this drug called loneliness, you don't make good decisions. And I just saw a story about this, about this loneliness drug and how it's sweeping across the UK and it's sweeping across America. And people will go 30 days and not say hi to anybody. And you know what that sets you up for? A romance scam. A romance scam. Exactly. That's why romance scams are doing so well in the UK and in the United States. Because people are what? Lonely. Lonely. And I'm sure she was lonely. I'm sure Audrey was lonely. Because she's a woman. She had no husband. She had no kids. Her father had passed away. And having taken care of my mother in the same situation she was in, when you dedicate your whole entire life to taking care of your parent, and when that parent transitions, people, you have no life. You're lost. You're completely lost because you spent your time, your every day, your reason for waking up every day was to take care of your parent. And when your parent is gone, and it usually happens all of a sudden. You're lost. You don't know what to do. You don't know what to do. You got to find a reason to exist. So she, I don't know this, but she probably got insurance money from him passing. And this was her chance. And she thought, I know, because I thought the same thing. I can take this money. I can go start a new life in Africa. But see, I had kids who was telling me that was crazy. I had beautiful that was telling me that was crazy. I had uh, people calling me, giving me job offers that was like, you can you can come work here and we can do this and we'll do that and, and we'll let you do this and we'll let you do that. And I'm like, what? Okay, maybe I should just rethink this, this Africa stuff and, and do this for a little bit. But what if I didn't have that? What if I had no one like she had no one? No kids, no husband. And she just left. And she left in 2022 when the pandemic was still going on, when it was still kind of, you know, still up and down in spaces. Places, I'm sorry. Spaces, what did I say? Places, yeah. So she left then. So you got to remember all this was going on. All of this was going on in her mind. So then she goes to a place where she thinks it's so friendly because people like Black Acres and all those people on YouTube say Kiki loves Nigeria, is just a hater. And she's lying, even though this woman that studied Africa from top to bottom, and this woman that's been here 11 times planning her 12th trip here, she's been to three different countries. She lied. She lied. And we just came once and we bought land and we know what we're talking about. Okay. Okay. And we're not even married to nobody from the country. We're not even connected to the culture in no shape, form, or fashion. But she is. But she lied. She lied. <laughs> okay, people. You should stop and say, what is her benefit for lying? What is she going to gain for lying? What do I gain from lying? And what exactly is the lie? What exactly is the lie? That you're lying to people? Because they are. Most of them are lying to y'all. Most of them are lying to y'all. Y'all know they're lying to y'all. All right, let's go through these comments real quick. Uh yeah, yeah, because it's crazy. What did y'all find out what I found out? And I wonder if this is the new game to be played, y'all. I wonder if this is it. We're getting picked off one by one by trusting Africa. And they're, yes, they're so-called, exactly. And it's nothing wrong. But y'all, we don't stick together as African-Americans. Y'all know what people do to us. We got to stick together. We're going to Africa living like we're living in the suburbs. Living by ourselves, off in a community, by ourselves. With some people who go, who got a group of cousins all living together in the same little block. And we're living by ourselves. And we don't have to something jump off. We have no backup. We don't have nobody to look out for us. 
There's nothing wrong with investing in Africa. It's nothing wrong with re relocating to Africa. But you need to do it the right way. And if you don't know how to do it, then you need not do it at all. You need not do it at all because you're going to get hurt and you're going to get taken advantage of. Then you're going to be mad. Then you're going to be mad and then you're going to hate Africa. And I don't want that to happen. They play dumb very well. The Africans are peaked that, we, uh, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, they will. They will. They know that we got this longing for Africa. Soon as somebody see and we go around with our heart on our sleeve, oh, please love me, Africa. Oh, please accept me, Africa. And everybody looking at you like something wrong with you. And that's how you're going to get taken advantage of the motherland. But you know nothing about the motherland. You know nothing about these people. You know nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing. Because if you knew something, you wouldn't go over there desperate like that. You wouldn't go over there just talking to any man who smiles at you like that. That's the first thing. I can tell how you talk to any man who smiles at you. That's rule number one. You don't do that. But they do that. They do that. That's a big clue that you don't understand the culture. That's just a big cute clue. Thank you, the like button. That, that's just a big clue that you have no clue about the culture. Only four out of all. Oh, oh, that. Honey, yes, the caters watch me all the time. The, the haters watch me faithfully. They they on here. They be the first ones on here. I'm tell I'm serious. Black acres, they be the first one. They get their notification. They be the first ones on here. No. It's it's I know I trust me. I know I have the haters watch. Long as they watch and they learn, I don't mind. I don't mind. <laughs> Performance arts used on social media. Yes, yes, that's all they do. These people are liars, okay? And they're putting your lives at risk. I wonder if her hand, no, no, I don't think so. I don't think there was an autopsy done because if there was an autopsy, it seemed just like with Miss Danita, there was a conversation about an autopsy. That's how I found out about her autopsy. There was a conversation about an autopsy. There's no conversation about an autopsy for Miss Audrey, nothing. There's no conversation. Only person I told y'all who was sounding that alarm was that man, Pro You Say. I think that's his name, Pro You Service. That was the only one. That was the, where was the YouTube people? Where was all them YouTube people who do this woman who talk about she they friend? I don't want them to be my friend, y'all. Don't be my friend. I don't need no friends like that. I don't want no friends like that. No, I sure don't. You could. No, no, no protection at all. You're sitting over there at why? Because see, let me tell y'all. Everybody know when you get there. Everybody know when you get there. Okay. So everybody watching you. Everybody know when you lay. After a while, they're going to study you. They're going to know your, your movements. The guard. And if the guard is not cool, the guard can set you up because the guard knows your movements. So you got to be make sure you cool with the guard. You got to make sure you cool with the right people. And you got to make sure you got people to look out for you. But the whole thing, you got to have somebody from that culture that they respect. That's the key word there. That the people in that community respect. Because when they know you with that person, they know off limits. You, we, we don't, we're not messing with that person. We, we, we don't do that. We don't do that, but we won't do that. We don't do that. We go to a place where we flash, where we do this and we do that and we do whatever. And people watch and people watch and people wait. And then we get robbed and then something happened to us and then we get mad and then we say Africa is this and then we say Africa is that. When the truth is we were ill prepared to go to Africa in the first place, in the first place. So I'm going to clean up these comments and then we're going to go back and finish talking about what I found out. I ain't got no long, uh, no longing for Africa. That's uh, really, I like Africa though. I really do. I like the social environment of it. The people, the people that I meet in Africa are really nice people. They're really intellectual people. You can, and they're not, um, <clears throat> excuse me. The intellectual people that I've met in the United States, they usually have some kind of air about them, some type of arrogance. 
You know, the intellectuals that I meet in Africa are not like that. They're intellectual, but they're, they don't have this arrogance, this air about them. And they're really cool. And you just sit around and you just discuss intellectual issues all day. I mean, you discuss social issues. You discuss serious issues. And that's what I really like about there. And you relax and you listen to music, you know, and you talk to your friends and you talk to your family. It's not like here. It's not like there is the social. And that's what they were saying in this study. The Surgeon General was saying that we got to change our social element in the United States because our, the social pattern in our country is, is what's really messed up. What we do when we get off work is really messed up. Okay. In a Facebook post about the Gambia, Take K depicts an older man courting a younger man. Uh, what you mean she depicts an older man courting a younger man? Well, you know, they they do that too. Yeah, they, that happens too. Believe it or not, uh, Tay Tay depicts an old oh, courting a younger man. She is. Well, she did do that. She did do that. Yeah, she did do that. And that's the issue that she has because she doesn't want people to know that she went over there and was participating in this sex tourism. That's why I'm telling you, that's why it's expensive because it's a tourist economy. Every It's a tourist economy. So quit lying saying, oh, all you need is $3,000. Get out of here. Yeah, that's the biggest lie. That place is very, and the, and the more it develops, the more expensive it's going to be. I don't even know how the local Gambians are living there. I really don't. So, um, Let's get back to our study. So what are we talking about tonight? Now we're, we're talking about, now that I've presented you all this information. So from the beginning of the study, I looked at Audrey, Miss Audrey's video, saw her sister's video. I went straight through her videos. And you guys, I'm just going to be honest with you. When I was looking through the videos, I really wasn't finding anything. Like I said in my video clip, I really wasn't finding anything. Like most people, you can tell when they're going through something because you can like see it on their face or you can feel it through the video. Like you could tell, oh, you know, by the way they're talking, I could just pick up things. But like I said, this lady seems like a really guarded lady. So I couldn't really pick up much. I couldn't pick up anything for real. So like I was telling you, I was like, no, I was just gonna talk about what I'm talking about, what I was just talking about, how we really have to know the culture because I really couldn't pick up anything. And then all of a sudden, like I told you guys, um, this small voice said, Look at the comments. So I looked at the comments. I began looking at the comments. Like I said, it told me you're not even following your own rule. So I looked at the comments and then I saw about poisoning. Now, let me tell you why this poisoning is plausible. Because remember, I worked in at the Urban Council, Council in Kumba, Cameroon. Remember that? I told y'all that. I worked for the Urban, Urban Council. And uh, that was in um, West Africa. And during that experience, I had the opportunity to live amongst the people. And that's how you really find out about the culture. You gotta live with the people and you gotta you know, hang out with them, interact with them, and they'll start telling you the secrets in that culture. So they were telling me that poisoning is how they kill people there. And I'm like, what? I kid y'all not. When you want to get take somebody out, what they would do, I'm not going to tell y'all the name of the person that I worked for, okay? But this was a, somebody that I worked for when I was in, in Cameroon. This person had been accused of, of poisoning his his uh, purse, his challenger, okay? His, somebody who was challenging him. That's all I'm going to say. Who was challenging him. He was accused, him and his wife were accused of poisoning him, okay? Now, I find this out after I go to this man's house, okay? I'm eating dinner with these people. I'm drinking tea with these people. I'm drinking wine, everything. So I go home and, and, the, and the maid, that's how you find out everything. You gotta be cool with the house servants, okay? Because they know everything. So the maid would wait for me, right? She was real young. She was about 16. She would always wait up for me because she liked to hear my stories, what I did that day. So she came in my room and she would sit, you know, she would sit on the bed and we would talk. 
And I was telling her what I did that day. And she said, oh, you went to his house? And I said, yes. She said, you didn't eat anything, did you? I said, yeah, I ate everything. And I told her what I ate. She said, did you drink anything? I said, yes, I drank everything. You got, yeah, I should have seen her face. She was like, oh, Kiki. And that's when she told me that this man had been accused of killing his opponent. And the way they did it is they put poison in his tea. And that was a common method of poisoning and killing people in Cameroon. It's a common method of killing people in Africa because it gives off other symptoms. It could be food poisoning. They don't know. It gives off other symptoms. So they don't really know what, what it is unless they do an autopsy and do a tox screen. And they're not doing that in Africa. You know they don't do that in Africa. Yeah. So that's how I know about poisoning in Africa and that that goes on truly in Africa. And then I was talking to someone about the Gambia and they were telling me the same thing, that that goes on also in the Gambia. You know it goes on in Africa, in uh, Nigeria, okay? So it's like this. Say you don't get along with somebody. Say you want your spouse has money. You don't want to be bothered with your spouse anymore, but you have to have a, a situation where nobody is going to question it because if one person questions it, then they're going to start investigating. They're going to start digging and you're going to get caught. But if you got, if you in a situation and you got somebody where nobody's going to look, nobody's going to question, yeah, that person might just be a victim. So let me tell you, show you what I found when I was looking through the comment section. And this is what made me realize what I was, remember what I was taught when I was in Africa, when I was in Cameroon, when I worked for the Kumba Urban Council, okay? The Kumba Urban Council, it's more just like City Hall. It's just pretty much City Hall, okay? So when I worked for City Hall um, in Cameroon, this is, uh, oh, hold on, y'all. I'm trying to go back so I can read it. Okay, so this is uh, one of the comments. And this is what made me think, brought me back to what I was, what I was taught in Cameroon. That this is a way that we, we can get rid of you like this where people will least suspect it. They will least suspect it. And my professor at the university, his little sister was poisoned like this. And I'm like, why? And they thought it was stomach. They thought she had food poisoning. They thought she had food poisoning, but it was poison. I said, how do y'all know it was poison? And they said, because her stomach turned black and hard. And I said, why would somebody poison his little sister? And they said, people get jealous, Kiki. People are jealous because he's in America. He's a university professor. He's building a house in Cameroon. He's taking care of his family. He comes back and forth. He brings Americans back and forth. People get jealous of that. And they want to hurt you. And that's how they hurt you. They hurt one of your loved ones. So this poison is very real. So it says, uh, so pro you service, he was going back and forth with this uh, mom and black man. He's from the Gambia. And he's one of those people. Who, he doesn't like when you say anything he perceives as negative about Gambia. So he was tough. Uh, pro you service was mentioning the, the poisoning, right? So then he said, they went back and forth a little bit. Then he says, I respect your opinion, but he says, I disagree. And then look who goes in the comment section, you guys. This is Miss Audrey's niece. She says, I am her niece and I appreciate your words and thoughts. No, she did not have any pre existing conditions. Okay. She had no pre-existing conditions. So for people who were thinking, oh, she had a pre-existing condition. Oh, something was wrong with her. Oh, she was 53 and she was sick. No, you can look at those videos and tell that woman was not sick. That woman was not sick at all. And the letter that I received, it said she had went to the hospital the night before, but it sounded like she was released and then she was dead the next day. Well, she, the video was posted on the 1st I think the obituary said she passed away on the 9th. So within eight days of making that video, 
what happened? What happened? And you're in the hospital, but you don't call your family. You're sick, but you don't call your family. You don't reach out to your family to tell them that you're sick. People, that just doesn't sound right to me. It just doesn't sound right to me. So look at these. Um, uh, let's look at these other uh, clips real quick since we're on here. This is another one that really made me really start thinking. It said, okay, this person said, you said she was a healthy woman and doing great things in the Gambia. And she was in a relationship, possibly with a Gambian man. Yes, she was in a relationship with the Gambian man. And I asked who was this Gambian man. I tried to find out information about this Gambian man, but I couldn't find out anything. I couldn't find out anything. I asked one person and they told me they believed that he said she met him on the beach and that he was a beach monster. That's all the information that I could find out about him. This person says, well, let me tell you that there is a strong possibility that someone could have witchcraft her. I hear about these suspic suspicious deaths all the time in Africa, especially the Gambia. So when you say, oh, Kiki, you're making this up, and why are you talking about the Gambia like that? I'm not saying this, people. Y'all see this right here on this. this. Y'all looking at the screen like I'm looking at the screen. You looking right at it like I'm looking at it. I'm reading it. I'm not making these are not Kiki Loves Nigeria's words. You heard my words. I told you, I know from an educational perspective that witchcraft is alive and well in all of Africa. I know that. I've studied that. I have a minor in religion. And one thing we study, our belief system. Witchcraft is a very ancient, ancient, ancient belief system. So I know about that. But these are not my words, people. These are not my words. So before you say that, this is somebody else. Somebody else who was agreeing with me and what I've learned at the university and my formal studies, which makes it factual. Not my opinion, but a fact. Let me continue. So, well, let me tell you this. There is a strong possibility that somebody could have witchcraft her. I hear about these suspicious deaths in the Gambia all the time. They are very common. The Gambia is generally a nice place and the people appear to be nice. But don't be fooled as a lot of them are only out to get what they can get from us. Y'all, that's poverty. That's poverty. That's everywhere you go where poor people are. Where poor people are, what's their whole goal? To get what you've got. To get what you got. But somehow when we go to Africa, we forget that. We forget the, ne the number one rule to the game is to get what you got. We forget that because we think we're in Africa and the Africans are docile. The Africans don't know. The Africans don't know nothing. They Africans, they don't know. So I'm just making sure I want to make, see if I got, uh, uh, that's about, we're going to read those in a minute. Okay, so let's go back. Let me stop sharing my screen. And we're going to go back and see the comments. Because, yeah, yeah, this is this is the reality of the people that, this is the reality of the situation. And I'm not, I'm not lying. I'm not trying to hate on, I love Africa. I'm going to keep saying that for the people who say, oh, she's just hating on Africa. No, I'm not. I'm just telling you that these people over there are just lying to you. She looked like she would have been, yes, she was, that's why they were mad. See, that's what that's y'all. Let me tell y'all when I went to the Gambia and I'm around these African Americans, y'all. It is a feeling you can feel in the air like they really not cool with each other, like they want you to think they are. They're not cool with each other like that. They really jealous of each other. They sitting back seeing who gonna make it and who gonna be the next one to go home. And I'm telling you that that's for real. That's for real. That's for that's what I saw. That's what I saw. That's what I saw. And that's more importantly, what I felt. More importantly, that's what I felt. And I felt the truth is the, the, the cover up. It was a cover up. Like, well, like the number one rule is don't let people who come here know what really goes on here. And if you do that, 
Shame on you. They don't want you to be successful because they're not successful. Look how hungry Black Acres is. Yeah, I feel so sorry for them. Them people are hungry. They are. They argue over food. They are so hungry. They killed the sheep because they was hungry. They're hungry. I'm telling y'all, you being hungry in Africa, mm, that ain't nothing like being hungry here. They are hungry. They are hungry because for one, food is expensive. Everything we eat, everything we need is expensive. But they're not telling you that. Why do you think they're so hungry all the time? Tell me, come on. You know they hungry. Their supporters know they hungry. That's why they be paying for them a meal. So if life was so swell for them, think people, why are you sending them money to eat? But you want to come on my channel and call me a hater? Honey, I pay for my own meals. I pay for my own meals. I don't have to go on YouTube. Nobody on YouTube is, call, is sending me money to go eat with, honey, and telling me go buy myself something to eat because they know I'm hungry. I pay for my own meals. So y'all know they hungry. Y'all know they hungry. But they're telling you to come there. They're telling you to come there so you can suffer just like they suffer. If it was so wonderful, people, why is this the first live video or live anything about Audrey? If they were so close, if they were so cool with each other, why are we just now finding videos about Audrey? Why somebody who ain't even in the Gambia had to write me and ask me to pray and please do it? If they so close and it's so wonderful and it's such a big family in the Gambia. Why is that? Why is that? Why are we just now hearing about this? Why are we just now talking about this? Because they don't care. Nobody cared. Nobody cared. If somebody cared, we, we, we see videos everywhere. Everywhere. We don't see nothing. Put Audrey's name in and see what video come up. My videos, that's it. That's it. But they care. They care. And they smile at her. I never even matter. I never even matter. And you have no clue how many hours and hours and hours it takes me to do a 30-minute video. That last video, that 30-minute video, you have no clue how many hours that takes. After teaching my class, after directing my dance team, after doing that, after they got a little store, I got to manage their store. And then I come home tired as a dog. But I said, I got to do this for Audrey. I got to do this for Audrey. Well, I'm going to tell everybody what happened to her. I'm going to let them know. <laughs> hey, it ain't cool like we think it is. It ain't what we think it is. And they dead dirty wrong for telling us that it is when it really ain't. Because if it was, I would tell y'all. I'd be the first to tell y'all. The first to tell y'all. They lying. I think they want to see us suffer. That's what I really think. Nigeria and Ghana does black magic. Gambia does too. West Africa does. People understand this. West Africa is a culture. There's North Africa, East Africa, South Africa, Central Africa, and West Africa. They, they group them like that because of climate, because of culture, because of social uh, connectedness. West Africa has a traditional belief system that has an element of witchcraft in it, people. It's not just in Ghana. It's not just in Nigeria. It's everywhere. It's in the United States because we come from West Africa, people. Understand what I'm saying. Witchcraft has always been an option for us. Always. You could either do good 
or you can do evil. Take your pick. It's always been an option. Y'all know about y'all know about who do. So don't act like you ain't heard your grandma talk to you about who do. Okay? Who do is our form of voodoo. When it came over the waters, we changed it and we called it hoodoo. Okay, so this witchcraft is not just in Ghana, it's not just in Nigeria, it's wherever the African, the West African is, that's where the witchcraft is, because we take it with us. It's a part of who we are, because we can either go left or we can go right. We can follow the most high or we can follow the other gods. It's our choice, people. It's our choice. So that's what you've got to understand. This is not just like, oh, I'm not going to Nigeria, so I ain't got to worry about it. I'm not going to Ghana, so I ain't got to worry about it. No. If you go to West Africa, if you talking to a West African man, you better worry about it. You better worry about it. You better think about it. You better learn about it. You better. You better. Uh, they never talk about these poisons and they keep, it's because, let me tell you, it's just like in our culture. We don't talk bad about our people to outside. Y'all know the number one rule in our cultures is you don't talk about bad. You don't talk about African-Americans to other people outside of our culture. We don't tell our secrets to other people. We don't reveal our dirty laundry to people outside of our culture. Y'all don't see me on other people's shows talk. Y'all don't see me on African shows talking about us like this. Oh, yes, I did. I did on Mr. Uganda. Well, I don't count him because he talked about Africa. But let's say let's say we were doing in the Netherlands. We were in Belgium. And Belgium said, Kiki loves Nigeria. You fly through here all the time. Would you come on our show and talk to us? Sure. I'm not going to go on there and reveal our dirty laundry. I'm not. I'm not going to do that. I may tell them, you know, the big picture, but I'm not going to tell them the nitty gritty because we don't do that. We don't do that. But I'll come on here and tell it to y'all because you're my people. You see what I mean? That's what we do. So they're not going to tell you the poisoning. The only reason I know about the poisoning is because I was cool with the people. I was cool with them. So they wanted me to know. Just like when I was coming to the Gambia, right? And... um. I call my husband my friend. That's like our inside joke. I just call, I call him my friend. Because, you know, little old ladies, they call their husband their friend. They call him mister. You know what I mean? They be calling him their friend. So I'm like, okay, this is my friend. So I was like, uh, when I met my friend, right, I noticed he was acting real strange. Like when I tell him, I, I told him I was going to stay at Tamala. And he was real, he didn't want to be pushy. But I could tell it wasn't safe for me to stay at Tamala. And I'm thinking, why wouldn't it be safe? That's where all the tourists go. So I said, you know, it sounds like you, you don't think it's safe for me to stay there. And he was like, well, I really don't. And I was like, why? That's where all the tourists go. And he said, that's my point. That's my point. You shouldn't be where all the tourists go because that's where the danger is, where all the tourists go. And I'm like, what? Well, you know why, you guys? Because the bumpsters are on the beaches. Wherever the tourists are, that's where the bumpsters are. And the bumpsters are the ones they tend to think practice this black magic and are more involved in these unsavory acts. Because the Gambians that I, I'm around, I'm, I'm, I'm sure these people don't do this type of stuff. They, they, I'm sure they don't. And even if they did, I wouldn't know. You know what I mean? Because it's so ingrained in the culture. I wouldn't know. But it's everywhere. So don't think it's not. Don't think it's not. It's everywhere. That's why he was like, don't go down to the beach at night. Because I was like, well, I want to stay on the beach because I want to go to the beach at night. He was like, oh, no. Oh, you should not go to the beach at night. And I'm thinking, why? And then when I started researching, well, you don't go to the beach at night. Because guess what? That's when they do spirits. They do spells at night. Spirits come out at night. Spirits come out from the water and walk the shores at night. Yeah. Y'all don't believe that's true, do y'all? Yeah, okay. Okay, Cameroon also. Cameroon, yes. Yes. 
I kid you not. Yes, in Cameroon. Everywhere. It's it's the culture. That's what you got to understand. It's a part of the culture. We even do it here. There's this new age of new little witches who are everywhere, who call themselves doing love spells and binding spells and all kind of stupid little black magic. But the whole thing about this witchcraft thing is that it comes back on you. That's what they don't tell you. That's why people don't do it. That's why you you could, you got to think carefully. Because in the end, you're going to be the victim of it. You're the victim of it. Yeah, it's everywhere in West Africa. And if you think it's not, that's how I know they don't, they don't like Cynthia and Rick over there laughing and ha-ha and he and talking about they love Juju and all that. That's how I know they know nothing about West Africa. Because if you knew something about West Africa, you would not be saying Juju like that. Because that's, that's like a... a you don't talk about that. You don't talk about that. You can get killed if people think you're a witch. So all this, Cynthia, I'm burning my sage and I'm doing it. That's how you know she don't know what she's doing. She has no clue what she's doing. But we're all, but we're running over there. They running over there following this woman. She took care of her health. You can't. Yeah, you, yeah, you could tell. Thank you. Yes, you could tell. She took care of her health. That's why I'm telling y'all this was not just a natural death. It was not. Miss Danita, we could tell she was sick. No, this no, it didn't sound none of it sounded right. None of this sounded right. None of the whole story. She was just gone. And then I'm like, so what happened to her land? What happened to her her house? What happened to everything inside her house? What happened to her um her furniture? What happened to her money? I know her father left her money. She was only there for seven months before she died. What happened to that? What happened to all of that? I am grateful for this poison and for the reasons that may be hiding and are more worn. But, and yes. Yes. Because that's why I tell you. And then they told me, don't eat people's food, Kiki. They said, when you go to their house, because see, in Africa, people will offer you food. And you're considered rude if you don't take it, right? So you got to take it. But my African friends told me how to get around it because they told me, don't you eat nothing. Don't you drink anything, Kiki, and don't you eat anything because somebody can be jealous of you and they will do this to you, okay? I said, okay. So as soon as I left, we went over somebody's house, y'all. She asked me for some cake. Did I want some cake? And all I could think about, her name was Aggie, was Aggie telling me, don't eat anything, Kiki, and don't drink anything. She said, if they ask you, tell them, say, no, thank you. I'm full. I just ate. So you, guess what? Every time somebody would ask me, you all, I would always say, no, thank you. I'm full. I just ate. Unless I was at my host family's house, I wouldn't do it. Yep, I know it too. Plenty play dumb with that witchcraft. Ain't playing in West Africa. No, no, it's inside the culture. It's inside the culture, just like it's inside of our culture. They're not going to tell you. They're not going to tell you unless they think you're cool. If they think you're cool and they know you respect the culture and you respect them, then they'll open up to you and tell you the truth. But if they think you're going to judge them and talk about their culture, they're not going to tell you nothing. But they knew I wasn't like that. They knew I really wanted to know. They knew I really loved Africa. And they knew, like, we don't want, once Africans love you, they look out for you. They look out for you. So they always looked out for me and they always like told me the truth. They always told me what was up. They always told me this and they always told me that. They always showed me, look at this and look at that. You know, this is how you tell left from right. This is how you tell up from down. This is what you got. This is how you know if he loved you and if he just used you. These are the things, but you're not going to know these things unless you become cool with them because they're not going to tell you. They're not. Because you know what they told me? Kiki, we look at you the way y'all look at white women. That's the way we look at y'all. We look at y'all the same way. As an outsider. We don't look at you as our cousins. We look at you as an outsider. You're not one of us. And it's the truth. It is 100% true. And you have to understand that. You got to understand that. We got to realize that as people. I've lost count of the amount of African men that added me on social media. And eventually they ask for money or a phone credit. Oh my God. And want me to send a picture. 
See, you know, that's one of the reasons I had to get off Facebook. I didn't deal with that. See, I don't even entertain that because to me, that's dangerous. I don't let them be my friends because for one, real African men are not on social media. No, they're not. No, they're not. Unless they're exchanging like an email, like corresponding with you about some, some type of business through an email. They're not on Facebook like that because they're working. They're working. Seriously, they're working. And African men work all the time. So the ones who are on Facebook like that, that's their job to work on Facebook, to hustle for money on Facebook. Because remember, romance scam is a real thing. It's so real that we're warned about it. And I'm going to show you in one second, as soon as I get this up. Uh, yeah, it's true. It's just crazy what's going on. And it's costing us our lives. Uh, pictures of his mom's his mom. Oh my God. See, that's the game. That's the game. Yeah, don't entertain that. Block him. You got to block these people because y'all know what? You know they can take your picture. You can keep it. Oh, thank you. You know they can take your picture, y'all, and try to do things with your pictures. Okay? So you got to take your pictures private. Everything on Facebook, all your social media platforms, don't have them public like that where people can just see your pictures. Don't do that because they can take a picture and they can do spells with your picture. Okay, and this is 100% real. So make your pages private. My uh, Facebook page, except for the business one that Travel with Tay Tay went through, I shut that one down completely because that's how much I don't play about this kind of stuff. I shut that when she went through that one and had it all on that her that video. I shut that one down completely. Now the other one that I have is completely private. Only people who are on there is my family. Because people will take your pictures and do things with them. Make it so no one can find your page except friends of your friends. So no outsider will be able to find your information. You have to be careful. It's true. I searched and nothing came up. Yeah, it's, you, you got to be careful with these people. You got to be careful with these people. Thanks for caring for our American sister. I wish I knew her before now. Yeah, because exactly. All these people in the Gambia knew her, but they didn't tell us. And I want, why didn't they tell us, y'all? Why didn't they tell us? I wonder if they do this sort of thing. Yeah, they don't care. <laughs> yeah, this sort of thing is done to whoever they could get money from. Whoever, it's not what color you are. Like I keep telling y'all, it's not a color is used to divide us. That's all. That's a little tool to divide us to get us to arguing about the details. But the real picture here is the money. It's the money and the citizenship to the UK and the citizenship to the United States that goes along with it. See, there's a bigger picture here because like I told you in the beginning of the show, we're worth more to them from what I've been finding out dead than we are alive, okay? So I'm about to show you in a minute what I found out, what happens when you, when you die. Let me get through these comments real quick. Witchcraft ain't an option for me. No, but you won't know they're using witchcraft. You got to know the signs. You got to know what to look for. You got to know how to look for it. Because if you don't know what to look for, it'll be right in front of your face and you won't even know it. You won't know how to look for it. I know nothing about, see what I mean? Nor won't see. Yeah, but you know, I you have to look because you got to be wise because people will try to use it on you. That's why they don't think being be, right. That's why they don't like being videotaped or you taking their picture because they know what you can do with it. Exactly. Why do you think they don't want to be on videotape? Why do you think they don't want you taking your picture? But we are all on the camera. We got all our pictures out for everybody to see it. Yeah, okay, we got we to gotta be more wise than what we are. We got to, like the Nigerians say, we got to learn to shine our eyes. And that means pay attention to what's going on around you. Don't be so gullible. Don't believe because somebody say, I love you. They love you. They don't love you. They don't love. What makes you so much better than the woman they got there? You know what makes you better than her? Is you got dollars and she don't. That's what makes you so much better than her. You got dollars and she don't. But you believe in this lie that you are a better woman than she is. You believe in that lie. <laughs> okay, I keep believing it. 
I won't be surprised if they take out insurance on people moving to Africa. Yes, most of us have insurance when we move to Africa. And most of us have, uh, you know, when you die, you have survival spouse. So let's go ahead and talk about that. So what happens when I die in Africa? Say you like Miss uh, Audrey, she passed away, right? And she was, we don't know whether she got a legal divorce from this man. Some people say they broke up. They broke up. Did that, does that mean they separated? Does that mean they got a divorce? What, what exactly uh, does that mean? So um, this is what I want you to see. That when you have, when you, you're married to someone from another country, you're not going to believe this. And you pass away. Do you know they can apply for benefits? Surviving spouse benefits? Listen to this. Can a foreign spouse receive Social Security survival benefits? You know how like when your spouse passes away here and you can get money? Do you know they can do that? So listen, in most cases, non-U.S. spouses can claim Social Security benefits by qualifying for survivor or spouse benefits. So this man she was married to, all he has to do is fill out a Social Security application, tell her her death certificate she passed away, and he can apply for her benefits. Did y'all hear what I said? He could apply for her, her benefits, okay? You must don't understand that. You don't know, must don't understand what that means. That means he, he's going to have an income if he does this. A nice, nice, nice income until the day he dies because he's Audrey's surviving spouse. Just like Danita's husband. Same thing. Same thing. He can apply. For her benefits now for surviving spouse benefits yeah he can yeah they can so let's see what else they can do so listen so what if your spouse was at <clears throat> wait let me drink some water so Say your spouse was older and they were at the full retirement age. I don't know what that is in the United States anymore. 72, 75, something like that. Say if they were out. Oh, it's right here, y'all. Look. So if they were at the full retirement age, that person's going to get 100% of that deceased worker's benefit amount. And if he's 26 years old or he's 30 years old, He's going to live for a long time off of that money. Yeah. Did y'all know that? Did y'all know that? Y'all think they don't know that? Y'all think they know that? Now listen. So, listen to this. If, you're if your spouse dies at age 60, you're going to get 71. Ooh. You get 71 to 99% of that deceased worker's amount, basic amount. So Danita, I mean, uh, Miss Audrey was 53 through 59. So he's going to get, if this person files for her deceased worker's death benefit that he's entitled to because he was married to her, Yes, that was her husband. So he's entitled to her benefit. He will get 71% of whatever that amount is. And Miss uh, Miss Audrey had a master's in public administration. So I'm sure that's a nice amount. Did y'all know that? Did y'all know that? So remember how we were saying, well, what happened to our property? What happened to our house? What happened to her car? What happened to her inheritance money she got when her father passed away? What happened to the money she get every month? She ain't spending all that money in the Gambia and it's just her. Even 
if it's her and him. They're not running through money like that. Where's all that? Where's the land? Where's the store? Who got everything? Well, let's see. Can a foreign spouse inherit? The answer is yes. Non-citizens can inherit property just as citizens can. So we can't even object. Her family can't not even object. Because guess what? That's her husband. And until you somebody produces a document that says they were divorced, he get everything. He get every single thing. Everything. And he get paid for the rest of his life. And I'm not done. There's more gifts for him to come. More gifts. That they just keep the U.S. Immigration Department just keeps on giving. When you marry someone older and they pass away. Well, let me show you what else you get. What other prize you win? Listen to this prize. So, can I become a U.S. citizen if my spouse dies? So, say my spouse dies. Just like Miss Audrey, she didn't have a chance to file for my paperwork, but we were going to file for it, U.S. immigration people. We were so in love, and she just died unexpectedly. She was 53, and I don't know what happened to her, but she was going to file for my paperwork. Guess what they're going to say? The widow of a U.S. citizen may apply for a green card even to obtain U.S. citizenship. It can, can become a whole... U.S. citizen now. U.S. immigration law accommodates situations where the U.S. citizen spouse dies before the national spouse may apply for the permanent resident green card. Isn't that so nice of our government? Wow. Yeah. Did y'all know that? I didn't know that. I had no clue. That's why I said, in some cases, we could be worth more dead than alive. Yeah. What do you think about that, people? What do you think about that? And guess what? There's no autopsies. Listen to this. In the Gambia, what happens when someone dies in the Gambia? Most remains are not embalmed and buried locally. Both Islamic and Christian burials and cemeteries are available around the country. So you can choose a Christian burial or you can choose an Islamic burial, but you probably won't be embalmed. And you're not going to have an autopsy. You're not going to have a top screen. You're not going to have your organs tested to see what you died from. You're just going to be buried. And 53 in Africa is old. So they just figure you're old. Yeah, you're just old. You just died. Yeah. 53 is not a young, it's not young like it is here. Following Muslim law and body, the following Muslim law, a body should be buried for the at the same time. I'm sorry. Following Muslim law, a body should be buried the same or next day. Okay. The Islamic burial generally occurs within 24 hours of the death. And it didn't occur except in Ms. Danita's case. Now, Ms. Danita's case was just different because people. We're looking for those little boys. Now, see, that's what made hers different. That's why the U.S. government got involved. The embassy got involved because they were wanting the little boys. And the embassy don't play when it comes to their kids. They, they don't do that. So the embassy wanted to know, well, what was the cause of death? And that's when they told, gave them this autopsy report. Okay? It just magically appeared like Lucky Charms. Uh, let's see. So... I want to make sure I got all the ones. Now we're going to look at this. I'm going to go to y'all comments and then we're going to come back to this. So, did y'all know that? I want to know, did y'all know that he don't need, that if you, if you pass away, he can become a U.S. citizen and he can connect all your benefits. He inherits all your property. So all them little letters y'all making up Oh, he ain't going to get my land. He ain't going to get my girl. He's going to get everything. 
and something happened to you, he gonna get everything and nobody can stop it. Nobody can stop it. And guess what else? He gonna get his papers too on top of that. On top of that. So you better be careful. You better be careful. Because everybody playing this game, they playing to win. From what I'm telling, and I'm telling this was two stories I didn't tell y'all. And how many back to back, I think, almost back to back. They playing to win. They playing to win. So why y'all think this is about love and romance? It is not more incentive for people to, yes. Exactly, because then you want to see, let me tell you, when you go for the, those papers, for it to be, for that person to get their citizenship or to get their green card, you got to sign. For ultimately, you got to sign off on that. You got to say, Mr. Immigration Officer, U.S. Government, I want you to okay for my husband to stay in the United States, and I want them to stay here. If you don't sign, they're not doing it. They're not doing it. So basically, he got to stay with you and he got to get along with you and he got to make things work with you if he wants you to do these papers. But he could really love you too. There's that other option that he could really love you. You know, and he, if he loves you, you're going to know because it is not going to be about the papers. It's not going to be about the papers. But if it's about the papers, you're going to know that. You're going to know that because as soon as the papers are gotten, they're gone. But see, they're not going to, this, this way, we don't even got to do that part. We can just knock you off and file for the papers and get them and get everything. And then I can file for your benefits because you are a retired worker. You are an older woman. You've been working for a while. You got a nice social security benefit that I'm about to get. And I don't even have to hear your mouth. I don't have to be bothered with you. I don't have to answer your questions. I don't have to meet your demands. But I get your money and I get your citizenship. These are the games being played, people. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Along with the jealousy and the hatred of the African Americans over there. These are the games being played, okay? What are you talking about? I'm lying. <laughs> I don't have to talk about this at all. This is just crazy. Y'all know how this bothers my soul to know this type of stuff is going on and these women are going through this? You know, you know what it's like to feel somebody's fear? To, to lay in a bed and think, tag, Audrey must have been scared. How did she feel? No, this is my last breath. I can't call my mother. I can't call my father. I don't have nobody. I'm in Africa and I don't have nobody. I don't have a friend. I don't have nobody. And I'm dying and I know it. Because at some point, you know you are leaving this world. And that woman had nobody. How do you think she felt? How do you think she felt? When she knows she was betrayed by the people who loved her, she believed in something that was all a lie. How do you think she felt? <laughs> and you think I just do this? Just This is just a lie, huh? That's just a lie, huh? To want to feel that pain? <laughs> Y'all need to quit lying to these people. Y'all need to stop making people put their lives at risk. You just broke the internet with that bit. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to, y'all. I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to do that. But I got to tell y'all the truth because I don't want nobody. I don't want nobody to 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 be taken up out of here because they're looking for love. Because like my grandma say, you're looking for love in all the wrong places. All the wrong places and in all the wrong faces. When all you got to do is love you. Because if you love you, you, the imperfectness of you 
Not I'm going to love me once I get all my dental work done, then I'm going to love me. No, I'm going to love me needing all my dental work because I love me and I don't care about that. I care about me. And if you love me, you're not going to care about that either. And if you do, you don't love me and I don't want you around me. That's the point we got to get to, people, and we're not at that point. We're not at that point, ladies. If we were at that point, we would not be with men in Africa that we would not normally talk to in America. If you don't talk to a man in America who don't have a college degree, then why would you talk to a man in Africa who don't have a college degree? Do you know how many men in Africa got college degrees? So why would you talk to one who don't have one? Why would you lower your standards? And that's what I see us doing. We get over there and we lower our standards. We talk to people we wouldn't even look at normally. Why? Why do we do that? Because we're so desperate for love. Because like I said, it's like Cat Williams said, you don't love your star player. And your star player got to be you. Your franchise player got to be you. You got to take care of you. You got to put you first. You got to love you first. I remember one of my ex-husbands used to always tell me, I know that I love you more than you love me. And I said, how do you know that? And you know what he said? Oh, because I know. And he was right. He was right. He was right. Because I don't ever love no man more than I love myself. I don't. I just don't. Because like my grandma said, soon as you love a man more than you love yourself, he going to walk the dog on you. He going to walk you like a dog every day. And I kid you not. You got to love yourself. You got to love yourself no matter what. You got to love every imperfection of you because it's you. And like I said, like I said in somebody's comment, you got to go to Africa and you got to keep your legs closed and your head up and your eyes open. And then you'll meet somebody nice. Because them dudes who run in that skim, scam, flim, flam, they're not going to do that to you because they know, oh, I can't talk to her. I can't run that game on her. I can't do that to her. But these other ones, Oh, yeah, they can spot us, y'all. They spot you. They spot your lonely, broken heart a mile away. Hello, Kiki. Just pop in and say hi. Why? Well, I just wasn't sure. No, honey, yes. I, I, can you believe it? Can you believe it? I'm sitting here. My mind is blown. My mind was blown when I read this. I just feel like sometimes we just be set up. That we set up for the set up all the way around. Set up for the set up all the way around. Either way it goes. That's why I said, see, if you with us, you got to meet, if we're alive, you got to meet certain standards. But if we're gone, girl, it's easy then. It's real easy then. And then you get the paper, you get the citizenship, and you get the money. Oh, God, Jesus, Lord. Lord, 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 I can't even believe this. No wonder they roaring about the romance scam because it is a scam. It is a real life scam and you can die from this scam. You can die from this scam. It's not funny anymore. At first it was funny. I was laughing about it, but it ain't funny no more. It ain't funny no more because Audrey don't look like the type of woman who would fall for a romance scam. She don't look like the type of woman who could be taking advantage of anybody. But why isn't she here right now? And why doesn't anybody know why she's here? She's not here right now. This ain't funny. This is serious. And all we know is she was married to a man, some Gambian man, and that was it? Then she gone? And that's it? And that's all? Oh, people, come on. What the heck? Oh, my God, Jesus, what is going on in our community? Do we care that little about each other? That's what I'm telling you. These people could not possibly, in the Gambia, they could not possibly care about each other. They couldn't possibly care. 
It's all about the clicking of you. The clicking of you. That's all it's ever about. That's all it's ever about with them. The daggone clicking, the daggone view. I know U.S. citizens can't even get Social Security benefits in foreign countries after a certain time. Yeah, please do. Wait, I just showed it to you, honey. You think I typed that? Did, did you, did you, Miss Gina? Quick, do you, do you think I typed that and put that up there? Please do. Research it. I love when you research it for yourself. That's what I want you to do. Educate yourself. Please do. Please do. Please do. It's, see what I mean? It's right there in black and white and we still don't believe it. We still don't believe it. We still don't believe it. Lady, it's from the citizen. Do you get it? He's qualifying for the citizen. You don't have to prove I'm a citizen. I'm a citizen. If I pass away, you're going to get money for me. Okay? Because I've been working since I was 15 years old with a work permit. So my foreign spouse, all he got to do is file for me and say she was my wife, lady. Don't you get it? Don't you get it? Just like your husband here. What you think? Is he an African? He ain't entitled to nothing. That's what you think. Or you think he got to come to the United States and live in the United States? What if he don't want to come to the United States? He don't have to. That does not minimize or, just, or, or, or say they're not buried. But we'll research it and see. You see what I mean, people? You see what I mean? I sure hope they don't see this video. Lord, I know. I thought about that too. But I said I had to tell y'all. I said I had to tell y'all. Because I said now I said it to myself, Lord, but if I say it, then they gonna know it. They gonna know it. But then, you know what my voice said? You think they don't know it? You think they don't know? Y'all the ones don't know. They know. They know the law better than y'all do. Why you think they doing what they doing? Why you think we just mysteriously dropping dead? Because they know the law. Just like I didn't even know about the disabled one. That if you got to marry somebody with a disability, guess what? You ain't got to pay all them fees. But they knew it. You think that all of a sudden they just attracted to people in wheelchairs? You you just thought that? No. They know. They know. We don't know. And that's what they count on us not knowing. They count on us not knowing. They count on us thinking because we come from the West. We believe in romantic love. We believe, oh, I'm going to meet Prince Charming. I'm going to meet the man of my dreams. And we're going to be together forever. But you're going to a place where they don't have a concept of romantic love. Marriage is about money in Africa. It's about money. That's all it's about is money. Now, these new people, these younger generations, it's probably more about love. They're probably entertaining this romance of love ideal. But these people, y'all running into, no, 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 no. This is about, this is not about romance. This is not about romantic love. Like we're thinking. This is about money. Money, money, money. Like the OJ say. That's what this is about. I wish I could play it, but I can't. They're gonna take my they're gonna demonetize my video if I put it on here. Uh that ain't happening in the UK. Oh, good. I'm glad it ain't happening over there. Because somebody in the UK told me it was. She told me it was. She said she the one told me about the dis disabled people. Yeah, it's bad, y'all. It's all a scam. If you think they don't know the scam, they know the scam better than we do. That's their job. That's their whole job. Uh, I will be dog on America. Is what yes, they're too lenient. They are too lenient. They're way too lenient. You can't be lenient like that. I'm really surprised that the US will let a non-citizen spouse collect. Okay, especially if they are a national, but it's not about him. You see what I mean? You gotta open your mind. You have to open your mind. He's not applying for benefits for himself. 
He's applying for benefits on behalf of his spouse, who was a U.S. citizen who passed away. And I'm entitled to her benefits. Yeah, because I'm, I'm, I'm the spouse. It doesn't matter. I'm her spouse. Now, he's not applying for Social Security benefits for him because they're going to laugh and say, we're not giving you nothing. But yeah, your wife, you can get her benefits. Please, people, don't think these African, these African men are smart. Especially these scamming ones. That's their job. Africans, man, Africans are the hardest working people I ever made, met in my life. I remember my friend from Ghana, she used to talk about how hard Africans work. She used to say, Africa, she said, Kiki, we come from third world countries. Our nations are developing. She said, we don't sleep. We don't need to sleep. All we need is a nap. That's all we need is a nap and we're going to keep on going because we're on a mission. We're on a mission. She said, y'all got this laid back, lax life where y'all can just take naps, take sleep, do whatever, relax. Africans ain't don't run on that kind of schedule. They don't run on that kind of schedule. So if you think these, these people are these romance scammers, that is their job. I told y'all about my friend who was a romance scammer. Y'all thought I was lying about that? Y'all thought I made that up? How can I make that up? How can I know so much about the romance scam and I ain't a romance scammer? Because he told me he was a romance scammer and he didn't want to do it, but he had to do it because he needed the money. And I told y'all, they work on that internet all day. He sit at a computer all day and they take shifts. And if you ain't getting the money, they're going to sign somebody else to you to get the money. And that's the way it go. That's the way it go. So y'all need to realize this, this is, this, we're just money. Not in all of them. I'm not saying all of them are like that. I'm not saying all of them are like that because they all are not like that. But you, if you don't talk, you got to keep the same standard. The same standard. If you don't talk to men in America who don't have a certain level of education, don't talk to them in Africa. If you don't talk to men who don't have jobs in America, don't talk to a man in Africa who don't have a job. If you don't talk to a man who don't have a high school diploma in America, don't talk to a man who don't have a high school diploma in Africa. If you don't talk to a man in America who don't have all his teeth, then don't talk to a man in Africa who don't have all his teeth. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't lower your standards. That's how you know. If you start, if you find yourself lowering your standards like that, that's how you know you're about to get in trouble. You're about to get in trouble. And you need to sit back and you need to just relax and you need to wait on God. You need to wait on God. And I know you're saying, well, Kiki, that's easy for you to say, you know, because you got somebody. But when you don't have nobody and you're getting older and it's lonely, that's so easy for you to say. And yeah, you're right. It is easy for me to say. But I have been lonely. And I know what you're talking about. I know what you're going through. I know what it's like to be lonely. I'm not just sitting up here just talking off the top of my head. I know what that feels like. And to think, oh, I'm going to get older. I'm getting older. I'm not married. I'm by myself. Blah, blah, blah. What's going to happen to me? Yes. Don't think I've never had those conversations. But before I just settle for anybody, I'll be with nobody. And I mean that. I will be with nobody before I will be with anybody and then when you decide you won't just be with anybody just watch just watch how the universe will start to reward you just watch when you set your standard and you don't bow and you don't bow down and just settle for the foolishness just watch what's gonna happen just watch what's gonna come your way worth more dead with benefits for your death that, but it's true it's true because they don't gotta be bothered with you and they're gonna get their benefits for the rest of their life and they ain't gotta share nothing with you honey they ain't got to share nothing with nobody. Them benefits going to come straight in their name. Sorry, but don't wonder these 20-year-old Gambian men. Are Thank you. Exactly. Because you're not going to live, what, baby, 20 more years? They're not. The ones I see them with, y'all, they be really, really older. They be really older. They be like 70-something. 
like 70, 70, they be in their 70s, because the skin be like hanging. And I never seen that before. I never seen skin like hang off your bones. I, I'm serious, y'all. And I ain't trying to be funny, but it I, they're older. And it's like, you know, you ain't got that much time left. And then I get all your benefits for the rest of my life. It's just that simple. Then I can apply for citizenship. I don't have to be bothered with you, but I'm going to get my citizenship 100% if you pass away and I'm married to you. I get it 100%. No questions asked. Long as I just got to produce a document saying I was married to you. Grooming murderers or ignorant black. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> wow. That's wow. Whoa, 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 whoa. I just, wow. I can't even respond to that. I can't. I can't respond to that one. No wonder that, yes, girl, of course. That's why you got to be like, uh, okay, wait a minute. You got to figure out what's going on there. What's going on there? <laughs> you got to figure out what's going on. I'm not saying you're wrong, but okay, lady. But now I'm going to reset. Good, thank you. Whether or not a non-citizen can collect social security benefits off of a, a deceased American spouse. Okay, thank you. Let us know, okay? Appreciate it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Because I made that whole thing up and I typed it and I I made it look like it came from Google and everything. If they can't say anything else, they can say, I love you so much. But don't fall for that. No, because if they say they love you so much, you know what I always say, well, what you love about me? I love to hear what you love about me. And then listen to what they say. Listen to what they say, what they love about you. Then you're going to know if this is real or if it's fake. That's if you want to know. Some people don't want to know, though. Some people don't want to know the truth, y'all. They don't want to know the truth. They will believe a lie. They will believe a lie. They will believe a straight lie. They will believe a straight lie. Let's see. Uh, also being supposedly Muslim doesn't mean you don't dabble into witchcraft, too. Yeah, I didn't say that. Ma'am. I, you didn't listen. I never said because you're a Muslim does not mean that you don't do witchcraft. I said West African culture, witchcraft is ingrained into the culture, ma'am. I didn't stipulate and say Christians or Muslims. I said the culture. Just like we all do it here. We all know about it. We may not do it. I correct, correct myself. We don't all do it but we know about it, okay? So nobody is saying that this, you're not listening to Gina. You're not on here with an open mind. Your mind is came. You came on here to try to judge and try to contradict me or something. Well, good luck with that because lady, I have two masters. And do you realize before you can get your masters, you got to defend your position in front of a group of people? So good luck with that. Honey, I don't say things unless I know what I'm talking about. Felt like a fool's unfortunate. Yeah, they do. But you got to just keep your mind open. You got to just realize what's going on around you, man. What it says is that people go over to these countries without no idea what. No, exactly. You don't know nothing about that country, but you're running over there because you go on YouTube and you see people like Black Acres telling you they're doing so well and you know they're lying because they're hung. They don't even grow those crops there. Those crops are grown in the village, y'all. Somebody else grows those crops in the village. They transport those crops to Black Acres and Black Acres plants them in the ground. Okay? Because y'all know we watch them every day. Cynthia and Rick is out there with that camera every single day. If they planted that stuff and it truly grew from a seedling up, y'all know we would see it. How do we go from nothing to something overnight? These are the lies being told. These are the constant lies being told. And these are the people that are telling you to come to Africa. 
They can't even and talking about how their kids steal from them. These are the people that's telling you to come to Africa. And y'all doing it without even researching. And when I try to enlighten you, you question me. What? What? Y'all are ridiculous. But that's why the, that's why you get taken advantage of like that. And that's why they know it. I can also curse co-sign that many of these men are so quick to tell you they love you and some are so quick to fall in love with, for that. Yeah, they do. Because there's nobody here telling them they love them. A lot of people are lonely. A lot of people don't talk to people. A lot of people don't have a man in their life. They want a man in their life. And it's nothing wrong with wanting a man in your life, ladies. It is nothing wrong with wanting a relationship. But what is wrong is that you become so desperate for that relationship that you sell yourself. You sell your soul. That becomes a problem. That is the problem. We have to be more careful. We have to be more careful. You have to be. Because there's no way this should be happening to us like this. No way. And nobody's doing anything. Nobody's saying anything. No. When those two ladies got killed in Ghana, that should have been the end of it. When the two sisters were killed in Ghana over the land dispute, that should have been the end of it. But it wasn't. Now we got another sister dead in Nigeria. Then we got another one dead in the Gambia. What in the these are the ones we know about. What about the ones we don't know about? Personally, that is a lesson I myself had to learn. Learning to, oh, yes, love myself. And the realization that, no, no, exactly. And they're not going to love you because they know you don't love yourself. They know that. And they know if you don't love yourself, oh, I can use and abuse her. I can use and abuse her. That's why they always want to call you queen. Oh, my baby, my queen. Because my, they want you to fall for that nonsense. My, What is it? That two-faced song, African queen or something like that. That's their famous line. That's their famous line. Because they know you're so desperate. They think you're so desperate. Because nobody calls you queen. And nobody tells you they love you. That you're going to fall for that nonsense. And a lot of us do. A lot of us do. Unfortunately, a lot of us have, and a lot of us still do. You have to be married for 10 years to collect Social Security benefits. Okay. Okay. Well, I didn't read that. I didn't read that, and that's not where it said that. So I'm not doubting you. I'm just reading. I just read you what I read, that you can file for their benefits. Do y'all want me to go back to that? Let's go back to that. Let's go back to that. Because I, these people who are trying to shake y'all, think I'm lying, don't, don't to make y'all think that ain't an issue, that's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. So let's go back to this one. Your surviving spouse's benefit. And this is coming from Social Security, okay? So let's share the screen. We're going to go back to this one. Okay. So it says, how much of your spouse's death benefits can you get? Okay. So if 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 you couldn't get the benefit, I don't think they'd be telling you how much you could get. Okay. And I'm not gonna go back to that. I've just changed my mind. I'm not gonna go back to that. I'm gonna go to. I don't have to prove myself to these people. We're gonna keep on moving. All right. So let's go with this one. The romance scam warning. Internet scams come in many forms. And that's what we got to realize. The internet scam comes in many forms. Romance scam is just one form of an internet scam, all right? Including romance, friendship, business, and job offers. So they can come at you and want to be a friend. They can come at you with a business deal. When I had my dance team um, business on Facebook, I got uh, invitation. Well, somebody from, I think it was Guinea-Bissau. It was some one of those countries that speak French. They had wrote me and they had a dance. They mysteriously had this dance team in Guinea-Bissau 
and they wanted to do a business deal. And the more I talked to this person, you know, I'm like, this don't sound right. Then I asked him to send me, him, me pictures of him and the kids like uh, at dance practice and just different things just started rubbing me the wrong way. And so all of a sudden, one day I just blocked this dude. I was like, I'm not talking to him anymore. I don't think this is a dance team. I don't think any of that. So I just blocked him. So do you know right after I blocked him, somebody else wrote me from a dance team? And then I realized, okay, this is a scam. So I didn't know they did business scams, but they do business scams too, all right? And job offers. Though these scams often generate, uh, I'm sorry, these scams often originate in West African countries. In other cases, foreigners are lured to Africa to meet their prospective friend. Listen to this, y'all. Wow. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, wow. Do y'all know how many people I have talked to? Because one thing I do is people call me for consultations or they'll email me for consultations. I don't charge $200. My first one is actually free because I want you to see what I can do before you, you know, you pay me. And um, usually I end up answering most of the questions that you don't need to follow up. But if you follow up, then, you know, I'll charge you. OK, if you want another one, then you have to pay. And it's still, it's still not um, $200. But anyway, and they usually write me about their relationships. They want, they want me to talk to them. They want to talk to me about their relationships. And um, what do I think? Just what do I think about, is this real? Is this fake? What's going on here? So listen to what this says here. It says, in other cases, foreigners are lured to Africa to meet their prospective friend or marriage partner. Once in Africa, they may become a victim of a kidnapping, an assault, a robbery, an extortion, or some kind of scam. Victims often lose money. Now, if this is on the U.S. State Department, if they're warning you of this, people, that means this is really serious. It doesn't appear on the U.S. State Department unless it's really an issue. And I don't think we take this romance scam seriously. Romance scam is actually a scam. Do you get that? Do you understand that? It's actually a scam. It's, it's how they support themselves. And they'll get you to come to Africa. You know how many women I've talked to who said, I met him on Facebook. I met him on Facebook. And then he told me to come to Nigeria and meet him. And they go. They go. Oh, God. This is so dangerous. This is so dangerous. I'm leaving tonight. Oh, you said I'm learning tonight. I thought she was going to say I'm leaving to go to Africa tonight. I'm like, what? But, uh, y'all, this is so dangerous. Oh, God. She said, girl, go down. Yep, and they'll roll you to a lake. Wow. This is really sad. This is really sad. This is really sad. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me put this back up here. It says, if a non-U.S. citizen can collect benefits on a deceased citizen's spouse, then U.S. citizens can't even collect benefits. Yes, while outside the country then that's a problem. Well, no, let me tell you the difference, okay? If it's disability, you can. SSI is not, is the one you can't collect outside of the country. SSI is different than disability, okay? SSI is like a, it's like money that you didn't earn. It's like the government is giving you this money so they can tell you what to do with this money. So that's the difference from SSI and SSD. If you're getting SSD, you can go anywhere you want to because that's your money. You remember, you worked for that money. You earned that money. So they can't tell you where you can live with that money. But if you get SSI, then they find out you in another country. Yeah, they're going to cut you off and you probably going to earn. You probably going to owe them. So if Black Acres told you to come over there and you're getting SSI, you better hurry up and get back here before somebody, some hater tell on you. Uh, Better lonely versus miserable. Yes. 
And that's what you know, you got to love. But that's called the dark side of the soul, y'all. When you get in touch, loneliness, let me tell you, when you lonely and you got to sit in the dark and you can hear the quietness seem so loud, that's time for you to get in what they call the dark night of the soul. And that's when you face the reality of who you are. You face the reality of who you are. You accept the things you don't like about yourself. You learn to love the things even more that you do like about yourself. You got to walk that road of life alone for a period of time to really develop into who you are. If you don't do that, you're not going to develop into who you are, not to who you really are. All right. So you got to spend that time alone. And you can, so many people are afraid to be with themselves. They're afraid to be with themselves. But you got to be able to be with yourself to be ever be able to get a, into a happy, a happy, healthy relationship. All right. You got to be able to spend time alone. You got to feel like being alone is the, like I love to be by myself. You know, that's why I got to catch myself because I'm like, OK, woman, you can't spend the rest of your life by yourself. But I enjoy my own company. You got to learn to make you your best friend. And then once you send out, learn to make you your best friend, you're going to start sending out them vibes, them confident vibes, them love vibes, them sunshine vibes. And then you're going to draw somebody to you. And that person going to love themselves just as much as you love yourself. And then guess what? You're going to have a strong, healthy relationship. But that's not going to happen until you learn to love yourself. Also, I didn't see what you posted regarding survivor's benefits. My accessibility may have missed that. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying I'm surprised. Yeah, I was surprised too. No, I'm not wrong. I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm not wrong. I didn't say it. The government said it. It said SSA benefits. Okay. The sites where I got my information said SSA benefits. If that, if it's wrong, then the government's wrong. It's not me. Especially as the U.S. government is very aware of fraud. But how can they, now just think, Miss Quick. Your spouse has passed away. You know how bad they would look to say, well, how do we know this was a real marriage? Now you prove it to us. This is a real marriage. They can't do that. Not at that sense of the time. They can't do that. You know they can't do that. They just gonna give up the money because they don't want to seem like they're being insensitive to somebody from a different country. So they're not gonna do that. Okay. Excited, exalted rituals. I'm sorry. Thank you, uh, righteous folks. Uh, yeah, they're not gonna do that. So that's why. I am not a U.S. citizen, and I am collecting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See how God always works. Thank you. See? Told you. Why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't this person be able to collect? Miss? Why wouldn't this lady? It's her husband. She got a right to the benefit. If she was an American, they wouldn't even question it. But we supposed to question it because she's not a U.S. citizen? No. No. It wouldn't even be fair if we did question it. I have the right to marry whoever I want to. And the government cannot tell me who and how to marry them. As long as I have a document saying I am married to this person, that's all they care about. That's all they care about. I told y'all. Y'all better wake up and realize quit playing like y'all little high school girls. Gets the light. Oh, thank you. Yeah, y'all better wake up and see what's going on. What's going on around you. Uh, yep, it's too much, Kiki. It is. It's way too much. It's too much, y'all. And, and the thing about it is when you go to Africa, y'all, you go to Africa with excitement in your soul. You go to Africa like you be so happy, so excited. And it's just a shame that this dirt goes on there. It's just a shame that these people want to dirty up Africa like that. Want to dirty up your trip going back home. Because you got to realize, 
when they realize you on this, we going back to the motherland. As soon as you start talking like that, that's setting you up for the setup. That's setting you up for the setup because they know everything you're doing is based on emotion and not facts. Everything you're doing is based on emotion, not facts. Plenty more we don't know. Right. There's plenty more we don't know about. I don't even, cause, and you know, I looked because there's a database for suspicious deaths. Americans who died suspiciously, suspiciously in, um, or by accident in other countries. John, do you know I couldn't find any? I think I found one way back in 2015 and this man had drowned. But that was it. There was no more. And I'm like, come on, people. Y'all want me to believe nobody has died suspiciously? No, but you know what it is? It's underreported because I'm sure it's something that's self-reported. And they're not going to report it because who wants to report that? That's going to make your country look bad. Nobody's going to report that. One time, the issue of witchcraft had had discussed and a Gambian man was on and he said that he didn't do that there. I remember it was, yeah, we did talk about it and he said they didn't, but that's a lie. Yeah, that's a lie. That's a big old lie. Yeah, that's a big old lie. 10 years is not true. I told y'all it's not true. Because how could they say that? How can they say you got to be married to this man for 10 years? You don't know when somebody's going to pass away. That sounds crazy. So because he passed away before guys, we was before we was married, maybe, oh, you know what that person might be thinking about? Their retirement. Like since one of my ex-husbands, y'all hear me, one of them. One of them. I was married to him for more than 10 years. So when I get ready to retire, I can apply for his social security benefit also. So maybe I think that's what he's talking about. For that one, and he's still alive. So for that one, even though he's still alive, I can still apply for it, okay? And uh, for that one, you do have to be married 10 years. I think he got confused. Because the lawyer told me, make sure you apply for that when you get ready to retire because you're entitled to his benefit because you were married to him for longer than 10 years. <laughs> so I'll be sure to apply for that benefit. Okay, so I think that do. I think whoever that was, y'all, he was talking about that benefit. Uh, someone said that they didn't do this in the Gambia because they were, no, they do. They, all West African countries do this. It's a part of the culture. All West Africans do it. I was married less than five years. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I know that had to be hard. And it's so hard. And all the money in the world can't take none of that pain away. Exalted Rituals says otherwise. Interesting name that you you are. Interesting name. Are you trolling? <laughs> Okay. Uh, I am not trying to say anyone is wrong or is lying. I am just surprised. I hope that's clear. I also am not just agreeing. Okay. That's fine, but you can do that too. You can say disagree, disagree. I am not saying as much as the government is sensitive to fraud, especially from Africa. I'm surprised. But how are you going to... But but if, if, if you're saying you're married to a person, where's the fraud? You see what I'm saying? And you got pictures that you with this person. That's that's going to be hard to say your marriage is a fraud. The government can't do that. Are you asking am I trolling? Yes, she's asking, are you trolling? She said, are you trolling in that name? Yes, she said yes. Uh, not true about, ten, about the 10-year 10 marriage. Yeah, we know that ain't true. It can't be true. It don't even sound right. Just think about that. You don't have no control over when somebody pass away. Your name at the top it is ironic, I think. Uh, yeah, that didn't even sound right. Cause that, I mean, how do you have, how do you have control over when somebody pass away? Said, I'm glad. I no, I'm not that, honey. Yeah, you can't be desperate, girl. You cannot be desperate because that's when they get you when you're desperate. If this is an issue, thank. U.S. government, the U.S. government is to put out an advisory so people, well, they did. That's what the romance scam advisory is. And it's all over. It's all over. I kept on and kept on 
I even kept on. I mean, I think I made a video about it. I might have to make a video about it. But they they did. It's all over. They're warning you about it. They are warning you about this romance scam. It's everywhere. But we don't believe it. We don't believe it. They are warned. They've been sending that. They tell you that on the beaches in the Gambia. Let me make sure I went over all that. Hold on. Let me make sure I got all y'all. Did we do the online? Did we do this one? Okay. We talked about the businesses. Let me make sure. Okay. This is the State Department warning. This is so many warnings. Yeah, we uh out of state out of my okay, we did this. Yeah, it's everywhere. I showed y'all. Okay, now here's another one. This is another one that they put up here. Let me go back and share the screen. Because they do they they warning you. You can't say you don't know. You don't people don't want to know. That's the whole thing. You don't want to know. You think, oh, I'm different. It's not gonna happen to me, and it will. This is another warning they put out from the State Department. Beware of young men known as bobsters. What did they say? They tell me this person told me her husband was a bobster. Okay? Beware of young men known as bobsters. They approach tourists, particularly on beaches. They might offer to help as a local guide, sell you things, or simply have a conversation. Bobsters often use romance to get money or other help from you. They may also try to leave the country through marriage to a Westerner. There's the, they're warning you right there. They're warning you right there. They're warning you. They told you you can be kidnapped. They told you you could be a victim of fraud. They, they warn, they have, they are warning you right there, people. What else do you want from them? What else do you want? What else do you want? But we still engage in this. We still engage in online romance scams constantly. Let me see. Yeah, we still engage in them. We still engage in online romance scams. All right, so let me go back and see where we are on our script. Uh, did I talk about, okay. So after I did all my research, these are the reasons that I came up with why she was killed, y'all. Because I told y'all about the the a husband that just came up out of nowhere, all right? And nobody, they said he was a bumpster. Then I told you guys about what Quazy and Mr. Elvin said. I showed y'all the video about when she was at the house and the lady was uh, complaining about it and the lady was taking her food. And then they was uh, somebody else told me that they were putting... Uh, Food, putting something in her food. Remember that? Okay. Now, you guys, this to me, after I heard all of that, I said, you know what? All of it. And then after I watched her videos, I said the three reasons that I came up with that these people were trying something bad had happened to this lady was jealousy, envy, and greed. I couldn't find any other reason anybody would want to hurt this lady other than jealousy, envy, and greed. OK, and the cause of death, we I didn't know. We don't know. There was nothing that could tell me 100 percent what was her cause of death. There were people saying she was poisoned. I tend to think maybe that's what happened, you know, because of just the history and what I've been told and shown about what goes on in West Africa. You know, because the person, remember the man I told you that I worked for? Oh, maybe I shouldn't have told you all that, but. I don't want y'all to know who he is, but he was actually brought up on criminal charges for poisoning this man. Yes, him and his wife. And they said he, they put it in a cup of tea. Yes. But of course, you know, he was found not guilty. But that let me know that this poisoning is a real thing that goes on. And it used to go on here because my grandmother used to tell me about that. We had family members in our family, there were women who would do that to their husbands. Okay. They would get tired of being married to them. So y'all know what they would do? She told me they would get tired of them. The men would be beating on them. The men would be treating them bad. And my grandmother said they would put a, get some rat poison. Yeah. But that was before tox screens. Remember? They didn't, that was before autopsies. Black, it was back in the day, black people didn't even get to go to the hospital. 
So the person was just dead. They was just dead. Yeah. So don't act like this is something that, oh, this could never happen. Yeah. We've even done it in the past. We probably don't do it now because we get caught. Yeah, in America, you're going to get caught real quick doing that. And she 53, they would have caught that right off the top. They would have known that was a suspicious death. So then I asked the question, who would poison Audrey? And two reasons for financial gain and for someone who was going to gain financially, I believe has something to do with it, and some, or someone who was going to get some spiritual satisfaction from seeing Audrey suffer. Okay. Now, financial gain, I said, who would gain financially from her death? Well, we know who would gain financially from her death. The next of kin. The next of kin was who? Her husband in the Gambia. All right. That was the only relative there. And that's another thing. You don't ever want them to know you don't have any family. You don't have anybody. You're the only one. If you don't have no family, pretend like you do. If you don't have any friends, pretend like you do. Get on the phone and call somebody every week and every day and tell, act like you got a report in every day or they're going to come looking for me. But as soon as they find out you don't have nobody, oh, you set up. You can believe you set up because it's easy then because nobody's going to question it. Nobody's going to question them. So what happened to her property? That was another question. Made me think, oh, this was about financial gain. Then I said, looked at the immigration and inheritance laws. And when I saw that, and when I saw about the benefits, I was like, oh, wow, this goes from bad to worse. So basically, if you marry to a U.S. citizen, you're going to get the hookup. You're going to get the hookup. So I showed you all that information. And now we're going to go back and look at these questions, these comments. And then we're going to talk about the spiritual aspect of this. Oh, my God, we've been on here this long. But I knew it was going to be long because it was a lot. Uh, one day later, yeah, well, exactly. You're automatically qualified. You're out, And with that one, you're automatically qualified. I never, I, I never, you, you got to understand with that visa, you are automatically qualified and you're automatically giving your citizenship. Yep, get self-respect. Then Yes. You gotta have that. Because they know, vultures know when you don't have self respect. Vultures know when you're vulnerable. Vultures know that. Okay? They can, they can sense blood, they can smell weakness. You are right about SSI, SSDI. You can collect outside of the country up to six months and also depends on which country you are. Yeah, because I think in Panama, they, they, get, they can get their stuff. To, is it Panama or the Philippines? They get theirs directly into the bank. So some countries, you, you know, they don't care. Survivor retirement benefits might be different. They are. They are completely different. SSI is not the same thing as that. Um, you're welcome. Okay. So let's uh, get these. And then we're going to go talk about the spiritual stuff. Because we know about the, we know about the financial, right? We know, that's okay, but I knew what you was talking about, New Age Cafe, because I remember that. And that's when I thought you probably got that mixed up. Also, you don't qualify for widow's benefits unless the deceased spouse is 50, which you said she was 53, so they may be correct. Yeah. Girl, why you think they want them? <laughs> why you think they want them? <laughs> that's sad, y'all. That's sad. That's sad. And here we are thinking, oh, we're going to meet somebody nice. We're going to meet somebody that love us. And all they're thinking about is them checks. Them checks. And coming to the United States. Whoa. This is crazy. And your kids can't do nothing about it because your kids are grown. They're grown. They can do nothing but get mad. That's all. They can't do nothing. This is just crazy, but it's true. It's the reality of our world. I came in a bit, I came a bit late, but I want to know which one of these social security benefits will allow a person to live in Africa and still receive as social security disability. Social security 
disability. And the survivor spouse, like if your spouse dies, that one, or if you're a, or if you're a kid, you got to live with an adult. But the surviving spouse one, okay? The SSI one is the one they can tell you what to do. Maybe Social Security won't think it's fraud, but immigration is looking at fraud. But what's the immigration issue? You see what I mean? Where's the fraud? She's passed away. Who's going to say fraud? How are you going to prove fraud? Who's going to object? You see, there's no objection. There's no nothing. She's gone. I'm sorry your spouse is gone. Here, you get to be a citizen. <laughs> That's what they're saying. That you don't have to prove nothing. There are warnings as U.S. Yeah, it's all over. They're all over. That's why they really don't do nothing when you get taken advantage of by a romance scam because they feel like we warned you. The government is going to cover itself. They're warning you about the Gambia left, right, and center. They're warning you, warning you about the bumpsters. They even know their name. They're telling you where they're at. They're telling you how they're going to approach you. They even tell you how to walk away from them. They even tell you what to say. Because they know you're going to be taken advantage of. And they know something really bad can come happen. Really bad can happen to you. They know that. But you're grown. They can't protect you. You got to want to protect yourself. I haven't looked at the Department of State. Oh, please look at it. Yes, they're putting it out there. I love the Department of State's website. And they stay updated. It stays updated. Like every time something happens, they go on there and they, they update it. They update it. So they let you know. Because they know women are traveling. Women are going to different countries. And they don't want us taken advantage of. But you got to remember, this is another country. The United States can't kick the door in and go in another country like that because you over there and something happened to you. They got to respect the laws of that country. That's why you got, we got to be wise, people. I am not gullible, Ella. Even more of a reason not to be trusted. But I don't think Audrey was gullible either. I don't think she was gullible either, y'all. I think. I think you just get lonely. And especially when your parent passes away and you're taking care of them. That's like a heartbreak that I can't even describe. You know, you don't, you're not thinking. And that's why you shouldn't get in relationships. You shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't do things quickly and drastically at that time. You know what I mean? Because you might make a mistake. You might make a mistake. Because I sure was trying to go to Africa and I'm so glad it didn't work out because I was just so upset about my mom. I just wanted to get away from all the pain. And I probably would have been making a big old mistake too. A big old huge mistake. I'm so glad I didn't do it. I'm so glad it didn't work out the way I planned for it to work out. That's why I said you got a plan and God got a plan. Yep, you got a plan and God got a plan. Because this is just crazy. Have people have people know who you are me? Yes, that's another thing. See, there's no there's no basis over there. There's no connection over there for us. There's no network over there for us. Internet bro. <laughs> there's no connection over there on for us. There's nobody for us to connect with. It's nobody, it's no check-in. It's nobody saying, okay, we ain't heard from our Audrey. You got to check in with us every week. Kiki, when you get to the Gambia, you got to check in with us every week or we coming to your house. We coming to your house. We looking for you. It's a group of us. We're going to get together. We're going to come to your house and we're going to check in and we're going to make sure you all right. If you went Kiki in the United States, somebody in Africa, oh, I'm going to call somebody in the Gambia that I know. Hey, can you go check on Audrey? I ain't heard from Audrey. She didn't check in this week. Please go make sure everything is cool. We don't have that network system over there like that. Once we get over there, we're on our own. And if y'all don't believe me, I'm going to do a show next week to prove to y'all how on our own we really are. All this unity in the community in Gambia is a big, fat lie. Once you get over there, you are on your own. SSI, known as Social Security, SRD, you can receive out of the country. Not, yep, not SSI. 
You can't get SSI abroad and you can't make any other income on SSI. SSI is yes. Yes. That yes. You, they don't have any like credits to get the disability, but they can't work. Okay. And she's absolutely right. That's why they can control it. That's why they can tell you what you can do with it and what you cannot do with it. All right. So now, then the second thing that came to me after talking to Quasi and Mr. Elvin, and after like just going through knowing the jealousy and the envy that African Americans have for each other in the Gambia, I was like, wow, and how much Cynthia loves black magic and how black acres just throw that juju around like it's nothing. I was like, wow. And then, you know, remember I did that show about Eric and they were talking about how African Americans just use black magic in the Gambia like it's just what to do, like it's just what they do. So I said, I bet you they were jealous of Audrey when Audrey came over there. She had money. She had a car. She had a place to stay. She had everything. She started off on top. And she after she bought all that stuff, after she bought all her land, after she started her business, after she bought her Subaru, after she started her store, after she did all that, she still had money. And she wasn't on YouTube begging like Black Acres. She wasn't on YouTube scamming like Black Acres. She wasn't doing any of that. So people were extremely, the African-American content creators were extremely jealous because she didn't have to beg and borrow and steal like they do. All right. So I looked and I said, Black Magic, What is? I wanted you guys to clearly understand what Black Magic is. Black Magic is also known as witchcraft, okay? Witchcraft. And you use supernatural powers or evil, okay? for your own selfish purpose. So, you know how good, how we normally, we pray to God and we ask God for good things and we never go to God with selfish, evil things. We don't do that. We go to God with good things, you know, bless the community, bless the world, bless this person. Well, black magic people are different. <laughs> They're different. They go and they ask for selfish evil things, okay? So, and to perform malicious practices. So they want to perform malicious practices. They want to hurt you. They want to go to their God and they want to do these malicious practices because they got to do stuff. With black magic, you got, like with Christianity or whatever, uh, Belief system, religion or belief system you follow, you got to do something like you got to pray. You got to do something. You got to talk to God. You got to talk to your ancestors. You got to do something. Well, in this one, the black magic people, they perform malicious practices so they can destroy people. Yes. They they so they so weak. Remember when Cynthia made that video and she said she was praying with all her might. That something bad would happen to them. That's malicious, evil. That's black magic. Because you know how hard you got to pray for something bad to happen. That's evil. That's black magic. And you pray to something physically, mentally, or financially. You want them to eat, suffer physically or to die. You want them to go crazy. You want them to or be hurt over and over again. Or you want them to, to suffer financially. Like the stuff they're trying to do to me. That's how you know they practice black magic. You heard everything Travel with Tay Tay said on that tape. When she called my employer. These people want me to suffer. They want to destroy me physically. You saw Cynthia wanted to fight me. They want to destroy me physically. They want my mind to go crazy because they're calling everybody they know in my professional career to try to destroy me. So they want me to like lose my mind. <laughs> and they're trying to destroy me financially. By trial, like she said, you're her employer. I'm going to sue you because you're her employer. That's black magic, people. 
That's black magic. I'm selfish and I'm evil and I don't like Kiki Lust Nigeria and I want her to suffer. I want her to suffer. I want her not to be able to feed her family. I want her not to have nothing. That's black magic, people. That's what they are. That's what them Gambian repats are. Everybody that I talk about, they all practice black magic, people. They all do. Because this is their mentality. You can tell by their ways. It can also be done by, listen, and listen, when I was little, my grandma used to tell me this stuff, and y'all, I used to think this lady was crazy. I swear, y'all, I was about nine years old when this lady used to sit us all down. It was like 13 of us. And she would sit us in a half circle, like a moon. And she'd be sitting, she had this chair. It was a big chair. She would sit in this big chair, y'all, and she would sit like this. And she would have all us kids around her. And she would tell us about black magic. And she would tell us, people do black magic. People would get jealous of you. People would be jealous of you because a man likes you and they don't like him, like that person. People will be jealous of you because a man thinks you're cute and he don't think she's cute. People will be jealous of you for reasons you don't even know why. And these people will be so weak-minded and so controlled by their jealousy that they will try to do things to hurt you. I was nine years old when my grandma was telling me this, and I thought this woman was nuts. But I had to sit there and listen. And I had to pay 100% attention because guess what? She was going to ask you questions when she was done. And if you didn't know, she had a switch in the other hand. You got a switching, not a whooping, a switching. Okay, so this is what she would tell us. People practice black magic, whether you believe it or not, whether you think they do it or not, it doesn't matter. What matters is they believe it and they do it. So you got to protect yourself at all times. And this is how you got to protect yourself. I'm telling y'all now. So when y'all go and y'all be around y'all man, y'all husband or whoever, that remember your hair. Don't leave none of your hair around. Your hair in a comb, your hair in a brush, you take it out and you burn it. Don't throw it away. You go get some matches and you burn that hair. You burn it. Nobody else. You burn it. Okay? Don't let nobody get access to your hair or your fingernails. When you clip your nails, and somebody say, oh, let me clip your nails for you. Oh, no, I got that. I do that myself. Don't worry about that. When you go get the manicures, ladies, that's why I don't do manicures when I go to Africa. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm cool on that. They can put a spell on you with your nails and your hair because that has your DNA. That's like your blood. If I have your hair and your nails, I have your blood. And if I have your blood, I can do whatever I want to to you. Now, let me tell you what else. Your clothes. Don't give people your clothes. You know how people give clothes away? That's why I'm really leery and suspicious. I don't like to give my clothes away. I don't like to give my clothes away. And, and it's not that I want to hold on to them, but I know people can do things to you with your clothes because what's in your clothes, people? Your spirit, your essence. They can use your clothes to cast a spell on you. Okay? So don't give people your clothes. If it's just a homeless person and you, you feel compelled to give it to them, then that's different. But people like oh, I like that bag, like when I gave Cynthia my bag. I shouldn't have done that, okay? I gave Cynthia my bag, but that bag had my energy in it, okay? She said she was going to burn that bag. So what do y'all think happens if she burns that bag, and that's my bag, and that has the essence of me in it? What do you think is going to happen to Black Acres? My energy, the essence of me, is going to spread all in that environment. You got to be careful, people, what you're doing. You got to be careful. 
All right. So clothes is another one. And your photos. I told you, don't let people have access to your pictures. When people say, oh, let me take your picture. No. No. I remember this lady asked me to take my picture when I was in Gambia. And I hesitated because I thought about it. But she was an American lady. She was real nice. But then I thought, why in the world would she want to take my picture? But then I thought maybe she just, you know, she kept telling me she'd recognize me, right? And I kept saying, oh, really? And she kept saying, I know you from somewhere. Your face looks so familiar. And I said, oh, I probably just look like a, uh, one of your relatives, maybe a long distance cousin. She said, maybe so. But she said, I seem like I know you. And she said, can I take a picture of you? And I said, me? You want to take a picture of me? She said, yeah. I said, sure. So I went and posed for the picture. But I won't be doing that again. And I knew better. But I only did it because she was an older person. And I felt safe with her. I felt safe with her. But I shouldn't have done that. But that's one thing. Don't do that, y'all. Don't do that, okay? Don't do that. I took a gamble and I took a risk. And I shouldn't have did that. Because guess where I seen the lady at the next time? She was on a video at Black Acres, okay? So, don't do that, all right? Practicing Black magic is something. I'm sorry, practicing. Oh, oh, okay, here's another way they can do it. And this is the way my grandmother told me they could do it. People will look directly into your eyes, okay? People will look directly. It's called giving you the evil eye. And people can look directly into your eyes. And if they look in your eyes, they can reach your soul. If they know how to do it, they can reach your soul. And they can snatch your soul. Yeah. If you don't believe me, look it up. All right. So that's that's the, that's what. And the way you do that, you keep your sunglasses on when you're in Africa. You put your glasses on and don't be giving people eye contact because in Africa, they don't give you eye contact like that. That's not America where we train to look people in the eye. They don't look people in the eye like that. So that's and especially if it's not your husband. Oh, they shouldn't even be giving you eye contact. They shouldn't even be raising their eyes to look at you. They should be talking to you with their head down like that. If they're not talking to you like that, then something's wrong. No man should, and that is not your husband, should be making eye contact with you. All right? That's why you shouldn't be talking to them in the first place. He should be doing all of that. Secondly, so wear sunglasses and don't talk to people. Don't do business like that. Let whoever you're with, your spouse, your boyfriend, your friend, friend, whatever you want to call them, let them handle all that. And again, people, look, black magic is not nothing new. Like I told you, black magic has been in West Africa since Africans have been in, Af in West Africa. It's a part of our traditional belief system. We brought it all the way to America. And like I said, we called it hoodoo. OK, so this ain't nothing new. This ain't nothing unusual. So you better be careful, people. You better be careful. Just like I know. You think no? Uh, you think other grandmothers haven't taught their granddaughters? You think they haven't? Like my grandmother taught me. You think ain't nobody taught their other granddaughters? They know, but I was taught not to use it. I was taught only to do good. I was taught never to do evil. I was taught that evil will come back on you. So I was taught to do good. But what about the people who weren't taught to do good? What about the people who know as much as I know who choose to do evil? You don't think those people exist? <laughs> well, I'm telling you, they do. They do. Don't be a fool, people. If I know, other people know. Other people know. Uh, I can't agree with that. If you experience a death or trauma, you may not be thinking. No, you don't. You don't think clearly. You don't. It takes a long time you know, for you get back to you. You take a, it take a, you never get back to you. Especially when it becomes a, a parent. I don't think I'll, I'll ever get back to myself to who I was before my mom passed away. Food don't even taste the same. Yeah, I don't even like food anymore. Before my mother passed away, I used to love food. I used to love the way food tastes. I don't, food don't even taste the same to me no more, y'all. 
It don't even take. My niece keep trying to find food that I like, something that I eat, because it doesn't even taste the same. Something as simple as food has changed because I lost my mom. So you think how your thinking don't change? Your thinking don't change? Everything changes. Every And especially if you take care of them. Yeah, the devil came to destroy. That's all he comes. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The devil came to steal and destroy, Miss Audrey. That's what happened, y'all. The devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. And he's coming again. Because money is there. See, this white woman tried to give me a Yes. And I felt funny. Looked it up. Yes. And she, yes. And I, yes. Don't take it. Don't take it. Or this is what y'all do. No. Don't even put your hands on it. Because some of them, some of them, if you take it, when you grab it, the spell is transferred to the palm of your hand. Where does it lead to? And if you grab it with your left hand, where is it going to lead to? Your heart. It's going right in your system. Don't take it. Don't grab anything with your hand. She's right. Especially if you feel, if it don't feel right in here, be like, uh-uh. I'm cool. Yeah. Yeah. You got to, you got to, you got to be careful. You got to, yeah, honey, wear your sunglasses. I wear my sunglasses and I sit and I watch everything with my sunglasses on because you're not making eye contact. Because that's what I don't, you shouldn't even be looking at me. You should not even be looking at me. We are not on the same level. So why are you looking at me? And why are you making eye contact with me when this is a Muslim country and men do not look at other women who are not their wives? They don't make eye contact with them. So you shouldn't even be making eye contact with me. Sometimes when folks look at you, they can feel, yes, you can feel it. I know I can. I can feel everything when I look at you. That's why I don't like to be around lots of people because I can feel what kind of person you are. I know everything about you by just being around you. A lot of people in America are in, yes, they are. A lot of people in America are into it now. So you can believe it if you want to, or you don't have to. My granny taught, see, my granny taught us all about it, how people can use who do against you. Yep. Because if you don't know about it, you can, you can become a victim of it. So they teach you. So you'll know, so you won't be a victim. Not so you'll practice it, but so you'll know. So you'll know what to look for. Because people do this, y'all. People do this every day, all day. They do it to keep a man and to get a man. That's how sorry some of these women are. They can't keep a man without doing black magic. And that's so sad. And then when you keep that man by using black magic, you know what he going to do to you? He going to treat you like a dog. He going to treat you like a dog. And you better hope he ain't the reason you lead this world. I rebuked, yeah, I rebuked her and threw the bracelet at her. She left me alone. Yeah, yeah. Because that's what you have to, because y'all got to remember, everybody got a spirit inside of them. We are spirit beings, people, in a fleshly body. This is just a shell covering up my spirit. That's all. We are spirits. And we can be good spirits or we can be bad spirits. But we're spirits, people. We're spirits. And that's what you got to realize. When you're dealing with a spirit, all the rules are different. So why shedding the blood? This is what I want y'all to understand. The shedding of blood is so very important in a ritual sacrifice. So after they get this stuff, they got to do some kind of ritual with it, okay? So what they, they believe that once they get this blood, blood represents what, people? What does it symbolize? Life. So if I can take your blood, I can take your life and I can manipulate your life and I can give it to my evil lesser God who needs all the light that he can get because this is a lesser God. It's not the most high God that has all the energy that gives life. 
So I don't need to take your life because I'm the most high God. I'm the giver of life. You see what I mean? This is a lesser God. So I got to take life to get life. These are the people. These are the God that these people follow. They're the children of the lesser God. So he requires blood. He needs energy. Blood is the highest form of energy. We need it to live. So that's why they want blood. And they use it in their ceremonies and their blessings. I mean, um, they use it as blessings to their ancestors and to their deities, okay? So they go to their ancestors and to their deities and they say, I got this blood for you. I took this person's life. I gave, I give you this life. I took it from this person and I give it to you. Then you give me something selfish for me. What is the purpose of a blood sacrifice? Blood sacrifices, um, basically what I told y'all, it symbolizes death and rebirth. All right. I took the life and I give you the life so you can live. Because this God, remember, the lesser God does not give life. He has no energy until you give it. You got to feed him. You got to feed him. You got to constantly sacrifice and you got to constantly feed him. Okay. Uh, so the blood is typically seen as very powerful. I just told you that. And uh, sometimes people see it as unclean, but mainly people use blood as that's the highest sacrifice that you can offer. A blood sacrifice is considered by some press. Pre a blood sacrifice is sometimes considered by the practitioners and they use it in prayers. They use it with their ritual magic and they use it to cast spells. Okay. So it's very important. And remember, I told you, don't always think about blood like cut blood, DNA, anything, your bodily fluids. So that's another one. I didn't tell you that part, but say you intimate with somebody and you go to the bathroom and you know how you clean yourself up don't leave your rag or whatever you use to wipe yourself don't leave that in there don't leave it in there okay because that's bodily fluids that's bodily fluids so they can take that and they can use that that has your dna in it your underwear all of that keep track of your underwear Put your underwear someplace where nobody can find it. And I'm telling y'all the truth. I'm being real. Body, any, always think. When you there, think, what has my bodily fluid on it? What have my DNA on it? What has my bodily fluids on it? Constantly think like that. Constantly think like that. Wear weave when you go. Because that ain't your hair. You don't have to worry about it. If you thought, you know how to shed your hair. You, mm -mm, it ain't my hair. I don't care. Right. To intense, okay. So they use the blood to intensify the power of their activities, like I just told you, and to gain favor with their God. Their God uses the blood for energy because he needs life, because their God cannot produce life. Only the Most High God can produce life. The more they give to their God, the more their God will give to them. So it's like an exchange. Their God, you remember that movie, uh, it was about uh, tag. It was feed me Seymour. What is that? Oh my God! Little Shop of Horrors. Little Shop of Horrors. And he had this African by uh, plant. I think I forgot the name of the plant. But it it ate. It ate. It started eating flies. Then it was eating humans. And he would always be like, "Feed me Seymour. Feed me Seymour." No matter what, his appetite would grow constantly, constantly, constantly. And that's how this God will do. Constantly need more, constantly need more, constantly need more. And that's the demand that is going to be on, on the person. And that's what happens to them. And they constantly got to do this to keep their God pleased. Because if they don't please their God, guess what? Their God is going to turn on them. I'm going to replay to see what you think about what happened to Audrey. It's so tragic. Yeah, it is. I don't really know what happened to Audrey. We don't know what happened to Audrey. Uh, so what do we, oh, that's the next question. What do we think, uh, do we think Audrey was a victim of black magic? She could have been. She could have been. All these YouTube people talking about she was a friend. 
She could have been. Because we know them YouTube, African-American YouTube content creators. We know they over there practicing black magic like all day, every day. Want to be practicing black magic. They want to be practicing it. So she could have been. We know black magic is alive and well in West Africa. And if somebody tell you it is not, they are lying to you. Okay? So she could have been. She could have been poisoned. She could have been a victim of black magic. But we know she was definitely not a victim of natural death. We know that. Because people, including AAs, were jealous of her. The AAs were extremely jealous of her. So we don't know. We don't know. We don't know if it was the husband. And husband, I'm not trying to talk about you, sir. I don't know you. I'm just speculating. So please don't be offended. Because we don't know. We're just throwing it out there. It could be the black magic. We don't know. Uh, what can, so what can we do to make sure this is not a common occurrence in our, for AA women? What can we do to make sure this is not something that's just going to continue to continue and continue to happen to us in Africa? Because I'm sure it's other deaths that we just don't know about people. I'm sure we've talked about four black women who died in Africa. You think there's not more? So what can we do? We got to stop being more trusting, okay? We got to practice self-love and we can't lower our standards just because we're in Africa. We can't think because I'm dealing with an African, he's less than and I don't have to, you know, oh, he can't find a job. Oh, Africa doesn't have jobs. Oh, Africa does. No, that's a lie. That's a lie. Don't lower your standards because you're lonely. Stop being trusted. Oh, I said all that. Okay, wait a minute. Where am I now? Okay. It's, and this is the main thing that I think we got to do, people. We got to establish a network of like-minded African-Americans who travel back and forth to Africa, especially the Gambia. And we got to do some kind of network where we check in with each other, where we make sure you're okay, where we make sure and we let you know what to do, what not to do. You run things past us. If you don't think this sound right, you'll be like, oh, that, that don't sound right. Let me run this past somebody in the repack community. Let me see what they think. How the ladies will text me or call. No, they email me. They email me and say, Kiki, I want to talk to you about this. We got to have that. If you don't feel right, email me. Say, Kiki, this don't sound right. I don't feel right. What you think? And I'll tell you. But we can't be on our own anymore. We can't do this. I'm on my own and I'm an individual. That may work in America, but it don't work in Africa. It ain't even working in America because loneliness is now an epidemic because of this independent mindset. And people are dying. They said uh, uh, loneliness is more deadly than cancer, people. More deadly than cancer. We got to establish a host house like host houses. Let me tell you what I mean, host houses. When I went to um, Cameroon, we stayed with locals, okay? But these locals had nice homes that had the modern features that we needed. And these are people that were vetted by the university. So these people had background checks. These people were people who were safe people. These people had, you know, showers. These people had air conditioners. These people had everything that Americans would need to survive, okay? We need that also. So when you go to Africa, you can stay with like a host family if you want to. So you like how, how Audrey, when she was at the bed and breakfast at Elvis b, b something like that. You know, she could go, she could come back, she could explore and come back. We need to know landlords that we can trust in the Gambia that have been vetted by us. We need that. We need an organization. Until Black people, I'm telling y'all, until Black Americans stand as a unit when they're traveling and relocating and repatriating to Africa, this will continue to happen. It will continue to happen because there's no one to speak as a voice for us. As we see all the other groups move as a unit, except for the African-American. They're still trying to move on their own. 
because we're so jealous of each other. And they got to be vetted, y'all. These people I see going to Africa, they're mentally ill. These people who are called this travel with Tay Tay is mentally ill. Black Acres, something wrong with them too. And this is all in my opinion. I don't know. I don't have their medical records, but I know regular people don't do this. Regular people will say, okay, this is YouTube. Yeah, I was scamming people. Yeah, I did pay the man $1,000. Kiki's not saying this. Other people are saying this. She's just saying what she's found. She's just telling what other people have said. So what am I mad at her for? I need to be mad at the person who said it. Or even more importantly, I need to be mad at myself for holding myself like that, for carrying myself like that. I need to hold myself more accountable. But mentally ill people don't do that. Now I got to spend my summer before I go to Africa filing for a restraining order against this woman. Because everybody feels like she's mentally ill and she's not safe. Everybody needs to be vetted. You can't just think people are cool because they're black. That's over. That's so old. That's so dead. And it sounds so stupid. This is just unbelievable. All these black people in the Gambia, all these African Americans, all these YouTube people talk about they knew Audrey and they love Audrey and they was cool with Audrey. But the only videos about Audrey is Kiki Love Nigeria. And I never even met the woman. And I'm not even in. The Gambia? But y'all love Audrey so much? And the only person sounding the alarm is some man in the comment section? But y'all love Audrey? Oh, people. Don't love me like that. I don't want your love. I don't want your love. Loneliness is as deadly as if you smoked your whole life. Yep. They just said that, girl, that's the same thing I saw, Miss Gina. That is the same story I saw. That's the same story I saw. This is bad, y'all. This is bad. This is bad. This loneliness drug, this is for real. People are lonely and they get gullible and they don't think when they are lonely. And they, what did they say? Remember Miss Gina on the stove? They said social networks. You got to have social networks. We got to form social networks. We got to seriously form a repack community that looks out for each other. And it's not just in the Gambia. It's when we go to Ghana. It's when we go to Nigeria. It's when we go wherever in Africa. We got to check in with each other. We got to. Or this is going to happen over and over and over again. Because like they said on the news, we are lonely and we are looking for love. We are looking for love and we are worth money. All right. See you later. Thank you for staying on. Yep. We are worth money. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Yep. We are worth money, y'all. We are worth money. How long was she deceased? For I don't even know. I don't even know. They told me, from what I read, her family hadn't heard from her. They didn't say how long. They didn't say nothing. They, she just, they said she had stopped taking their calls. So that means she wasn't answering the phone. I don't know how long. But then they said there was a group and somebody asked this group, this what's up group, and they found out that they asked about her. And then that's when they said that um, they found that someone in the WhatsApp group said she had passed away. Her family didn't know. The person in the WhatsApp group said she had passed away. Yes, she had passed away. And that's how her family found out. That's how her family found out. So you got to be close. You got to have a network. Beautiful. You got to have a network. You cannot ever be on your own. Close these blinds. You got to have a network because if you're on your own, 
you're a setting up. You're a sitting up. You're a target. You're because that means ain't nobody gonna look for you. Because everybody know when I'm in Africa, y'all, my family is looking for me all the time. All the time. Do you hear me? My phone is constantly going off, going off, going off, going off. Because my family looking for me. Don't let me not, don't let them not hear from me in a day. They're not going a day without hearing from me. They're not going a day. Are they calling, 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 calling? They taking shifts calling, okay? So no. No, I remember my, the second time I went to the Cambia. My phone went dead. Honey, my sons had their girlfriends calling. They was calling and the girlfriends was calling. I said the phone just went dead. But you got to have it like that. You got to have it like that. Because if you don't, mm -mm, it's too easy for you to be a victim. So that's how our family found out. And I have no clue how long she had been dead. Because nobody nobody said anything. All these people, all these repats in the Gambia knew. But nobody said nothing. They said they were sorry and that was it, y'all. But they never did sound the alarm. Poor Audrey. She didn't even have real friends in the Gambia. So this is something else. I'm going to end with this. And this just, this just disturbed my soul when I read this. It said, well, this was a picture. Above this message was a picture of Audrey and the man, her husband. I don't know if Audrey is saying this or if somebody else is saying this. But whoever is saying this, I'm going to pray for you. Well, it's a dream. Live it up. Is he Muslim? Good for you. Don't know what it must feel like to have a man by your side. That's awesome. This part that says, I don't want, I don't know what it must feel like to have a real man by your side. I feel so bad for that woman. I feel so bad for that woman who ever said that. So bad. Because this is the type of woman they look for. This is the type of woman who ever made that statement. That's the type they look for. Because you're lonely and you're vulnerable. You said you've never had a man by your a real man in your life. That's not true. That's not true. You had the spirit of God in your life all your life. And we don't know whether that spirit is a man or a woman. But it don't even matter. But that spirit has your back no matter what. And the fact that you haven't felt that love and you haven't been comforted by that spirit and you're looking for a physical man to make you feel like that. We got to pray for each other, y'all. Cause we got to pray for each other because that's scary. That's really scary. That's really scary. Let's look at this last comment. It says, I wanted to apologize if any. Oh, no, that's okay. No, that's okay. No, that's okay. Because when I'm talking and I'm in like the zone and I'm talking like that, um, some of the stuff I say, please forgive me. I don't mean to say it like that. So please forgive me. But you got you can be argumentative if you want to. You can question anything on this show. That's what I that's what I want it to be about. We question everything over here. We don't just believe stuff because somebody said it. <laughs> I am sure if you go and we watch this, I will realize I haven't no, you didn't embarrass yourself. You didn't embarrass yourself. No, you didn't. You were just questioning. That's what you're supposed to do. All right, y'all. I think that's all I got. Let me make sure. Yeah, I think that's all I have. Thank you for watching. I want to say, Audrey, rest easy. I am so sorry this happened to you. And I wish, I wish I could know. I wish I could tell the world this is what happened to Audrey. But I don't know. I just know something bad happened to you. And let me tell y'all something. When I was making that video, in that last video, there's the song. In that video, it's called Without Reason. 
without reason. That was the name of the song. Do y'all know when I was making the video, do you know that that's what kept coming to my head? Because I kept saying, why would they do this? Why would somebody kill her? This is obvious. Somebody did something to her. Why would somebody do something to her? And this little voice kept saying in my head, they didn't have to do that. I would have given them anything they asked for. It was without reason. It was without reason. All they had to do was ask. And I would have given them whatever they wanted. It was without reason. And then while I'm listening to this voice in my head, y'all, I put the video, I'm doing the video editing, and then I look at the song. And the name of the song is Without Reason. This is how God works. This is how the spirit will come to you and tell you things. All of this was without reason. Without reason. And I want to send my sincere condolences to her family and her friends. Because this is a real person, y'all. And she got a family. And she got real friends who are really her who didn't want her to go to Africa and told her not to go, who begged her not to go. But she did it anyway. And it cost her her life. So I want to offer my sincere condolences to them because I know they are in pain. But look, that's all we're going to talk about tonight. But next week, we're going to talk about something else really sad. This is another nightmare story from the Gambia. Yeah. Another nightmare story from the Gambia. But this one, y'all, this one is a heartbreak in the Gambia. This story is a heartbreak in the Gambia, okay? Y'all not going to believe this. But this story broke my heart. And after I read it, I cried. I cried. And every time I think about what this person is going through, I cry because I feel her pain. And she trusted me to tell her story and to share her pain. Yeah, this is a sad one. Just talking about it now, I want to cry. So we're going to talk about it next week. I'm going to tell y'all this real sad story that's just breaking my heart. And I just, my heart just breaks for this lady. No, she didn't go home. She's still in the Gambia. She didn't go home. She's Because they got to pay. See, that's another thing. I, I didn't go over that tonight. I had so much information. For your, for your family, for me, for if you pass away in the Gambia, and your family wants you brought back to the United States, they have to pay for that. The government is not giving you any money for that. They got to pay for that. And it's extremely expensive. And she has a husband. She had a husband there. Because I doubt very seriously if they did a divorce. So he gets to say, because that's her next of kin. Uh, thank you for all you do, Kiki. Nobody else is telling us about these women like you are. Thank you, because you know what? I wanted to tell their story because a lot of people don't have a YouTube channel, but I do. A lot of people don't want to tell other people's stories, but I do because I know people are in pain out there and I want you to know. I want you to know the truth and I'll tell your story. I'll gladly tell your story because some people don't talk like that. Some people can't sit in front of a camera and talk to strangers like I do. So I'll do it for you. And if it costs me to go through what I'm going through with this next story, then I'll do that. Because I want y'all to know the truth. And this lady wants y'all to know the truth. She wants y'all to know how bad they lying to y'all in the Gambia. She wants y'all to know. Because this ain't just happening to her. This didn't just happen to her. This is happening to a lot of people in the Gambia, but they trying to pretend like it's not. So, all right, y'all, we're going to talk about this next week. Y'all, I hope I don't cry. If I cry, y'all, please don't be talking about me. Please don't be talking about me. I'm for real. 
Because just thinking about it now, thank you. Thank you so much. I will. Just thinking about it makes me want to cry. Yeah, the game being Chronicles. Yeah. It's bad. It's bad. This was a bad one, y'all. This was a sad one. It was a sad one. All right. I love y'all so much. Y'all know y'all my best friends. <laughs> y'all know y'all my best friends. And we got each other. So we don't got to be lonely because we got our community and we got each other. And we got each other's back. And we're going to look out for each other. If y'all don't see me making videos, y'all email me and say, what's up, Kiki? I ain't seen you out here. If y'all don't see me talking about bag, yeah, if y'all don't see me making comments about bag on my community page, y'all better say something. Y'all better email me and say, hey, girl, where you at? Y'all better go in the comment section and say, hey, you all right? We got to look out for each other because that's what the news say. There's no community. There's no social communities in the United States. And that's what we need. Because if we had a social network and we looked out for each other, this wouldn't have happened to Audrey. They would have been too scared to do this to Audrey because they know we'd be on them. We'd be on their backs 100% and they wouldn't want that kind of heat. All right, I love y'all best friends. I will see y'all next week. And uh, we'll talk about, we'll put the y'all know I'll put the video out, tell the story, and then we come on the live and we talk about it. So y'all going to see the videos where I tell the story about the sad story in the Gambia, and then we'll do a live where we talk about it. And then after that, we're going to talk about some drama at the border in the Gambia. <laughs> Woo! The Gambia's on fire again. All right, y'all, that's all I got. I will see y'all. Later.